Yeah, buddy. And we're live. I'm here with Rich Mitch the Duck coming on doing a last minute stream. Hello. I'm already seeing the faces in the comments. What's up, Peter? Coming on Peter doing Corcoran. a last minute stream. Galen. Galen. Smelly Galen. <laughs> Little Galen. Galen's got a link, so if he decides he, he wants to come on, he can. How's it going, Duck? How's your day? Uh, it's been all right. Um, just all right. I wore the wrong. Yeah, I wore the wrong. I wore the wrong. Uh, I wore the wrong fragrance today. Is today not um, the best day of your life? Today was not the very best day of my life. It should be. Um, why? Well, it's because it's now. It's it's the conscious present moment. Everything else is gone. Oh, give over! I don't believe that. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I'm, uh, it might be true, but I, I don't have to believe it. I okay. did, I did find this. I did get a couple of couple of good, good, good things today. Um, I took my friend to took my friend to hospital for a scan. Um, so that's out of the way. And then I also like I bought my friend some um, some matars, like you know, like um, some like perfume matars, and. Uh, they finally arrived after like 10 days today. So that was nice to get that out of the way. What kind of atars? They were from Mellifluence, um, who I didn't realize only lives about 20 minutes away from me. Hello, Lyndon. Um, so, yes, he got his atars today. Um, they're from Mellifluence. I'll put it in the comments. Um you can find his store on Etsy. So I got him some, because he, Alifluence Etsy. So if you go on Etsy, yeah, like Oud Atars, um, but you can get like different Atars. If you get in touch with him, he might even make you some, I don't know. Right. Um, um, being asked if, way, I are, are, if I've already ordered Tobacco Collar. It's not available here, but the moment it is, uh, you can be sure uh, I'll... I'll have a bottle. I'm excited. I I already have an uh, idea of what it's going to smell like, but regardless, I will be getting it. Um, what else did I do? I ordered some samples off Greggy Boy as well. I ordered H24. So next time we do a stream, we can talk about H24 together. Um, it's okay. just a little three mil sample. A little three mil sample I ordered. Um. Which is I enough. Ordered some book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I ordered. What else did I order? I ordered. Um, Bow makers by DS and Durger. I've ordered Burnham Barber Shop by DS and Durger, and I I've ordered been Venom a Dance lot about by Talon. Uh, DS and Durger. Oh, maybe it's yeah, from you actually. Meant... No, no, no. It's not from me. Um, it it smells. Um, I don't know what it smells like because I haven't smelled it yet, but I've heard a lot about them. I heard about them from Peter, I think. Mm. So this so. this live stream isn't about any one perfumer in particular. We just want to talk about the subject. This is something we talked about quite often on this channel, actually. Um, us us geeky fragrance lovers love you know all the backstories on perfume. So perfumers are some of our heroes and idols, so we do like to talk about them but there is also an article on Fragrantica last week um, asking this exact same question and I don't know if it's coming from our streams or uh, other sources but um, you know they're asking the same question is it okay to lie and we'll get into that we're just gonna we're gonna wait for the people to come in share your scent of the day let us know what you're wearing duck let us know what you're wearing like this video get those likes up um, four likes, 40 people in the stream. Come on, guys, get those likes up. Let us know that you're here. Let us, know, let us know that you enjoy the content. Yes, there's. I've seen a couple of comments that I want to raise, actually. Um, Arnold says that he's ordered a bottle of Nice 10, which is something you need to get um, yeah, because absolutely. it's exactly the type of thing you're into. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, Raj is saying that he is wearing vintage Van Cleef and Arpel Czar, which I have got, and I was thinking of wearing tomorrow because it's beautiful. 
Now, what is the um, translation for Tsar? That sounds like king or something to me. It's it's emperor. It's Russian emperor. It means amber? Emperor. Emperor. Okay. Because in Croatian, it sounds like Tsar, like king. Yeah. In very Russia. similar. Sometimes sometimes in Russia, it's it's spelled with a C. So Tsar, like Tsar, or the Tsar. Right. right. But sometimes it's spelled with a T, Tsar. Like sometimes in um, in uh, Latin based languages, B and V are often um, B and V are often mixed up. Uh, oh, Mister Miami Cuddles, Neil, I, I saw your I saw your review of um, Boss Bottle Boss Number One. Sorry, on Frey Grandiga today. I logged on just after you posted it to change my scent of the day. As a master perfumer myself, I can tell you, no, it is not okay to lie. Hmm, interesting. CK, is this somebody we That's know? Funny. Or is this... Uh... CK, we know CK. It's no, Colin. no, it's a post here. He claims to be a master perfumer. Hi, as a master perfumer myself, I can tell you, no, it is not okay to lie. <laughs> We're getting some pretty good sense of the day here, seeing a lot of Chanel. I, I wore um, Sartorial. What did you wear? I am in uh, 19 Pudra right now. Oh, yes. And this nice. is the the more creamier, warmier, warmier. <laughs> did I actually say what? <laughs> <laughs> I got that word lie in my head and I'm lying about words. Um, warmer, powderier, powder, powderier version of 19. So the Ooh, pastels, yeah, I like, I like. The, the pastels really come alive here. I feel like it is more orisy. Lots of iris in regular 19. I think 19, regular 19 is a little bit colder. I'm talking about the EDT. Um, so Very is is cool. number nineteen is number nineteen Iris Pudra an EDT or an EDP? This is an EDP, right? EDP. So is it is it closer? Is it is it close? Is it more closely related to the EDT or the EDP? Hmm. I think it's very true to number nineteen. I would say it's closer it, to the EDP. Right. So it's more a flanker of the EDP than it is of the EDT. Now, I find the EDP and the Pudra more warm, whereas the EDT is, it's got this sterile coldness to it. Yeah, standoffish. Yeah, they, they use crisp notes. Yeah. Like it's got its, it's, got its own um, personal space. Yeah. A lot of my my Frantica is just called Eugenius, and it's fairly new. I just uh, created an account not even a year ago, but I don't post a whole lot on there. Where do you keep a database of all your fragrances? Then do uh, you just keep them in front of you? Base notes. All right. Um, let's see. let me see where we are. So we've discussed this here many times. Is it okay to lie? Oh, Mahora. Now, that's a challenging fragrance to wear. It's not easy to wear. And what uh, is it? that is a floral. Um, oh. Mahora is, what is it? Jasmine, Frangipani, Lily of the Valley. Uh, Oof. It's a, I have a bottle here. It's so... I want to say classic. It's a very classic scent. Um, two burrows. Bloody hell. It can get quite dirty and challenging, and it didn't last very long in production. That's it. It, it sounds like my idea of hell, but I really don't like tuberose. If you like tuberose, the um, Cedra by Serge Luton's like. A massive tuberose fragrance. Absolutely nothing to do with cedar. Um, 
Why is it that Chanel uh, is so cheap with their samples when you buy a fragrance? I don't think it's Chanel particularly. I think it's the sales assistant you deal with. I don't have that problem yeah. <laughs> just because they, you know, they know who I am and I spend a lot of money there. However, if, if, if they're not familiar with you, you know, I think samples are, are hard for them to even come by and they do save them. <clears throat> um, to save them for the regulars. Yeah. Yeah. I would totally agree cool. with that. That, that Chanel, sorry, Chanel are like the opposite of um, insurance companies. They're better with their uh, existing company than the, with their existing con uh, customers than they are with um, trying to attract new customers. You now, our insurance company always give better deals to um, to attract new customers, and they don't give good deals to their existing com uh, customers. That's yeah. what Ch Chanel are the opposite. Chanel really look after their good customers. Yeah. But yeah, I and think it's a, they had they do have a policy. It's one or two samples maximum. Um, Dior is the same. When you make a purchase of a Dior Privé, they'll give you one of those 7.5 mil uh, samples. So, so they don't they, exist anymore. It, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They've been, they've been, they've been got rid of since when? About about six months a year. Um, they do not give out. Whenever I've been to my local Dior. Uh, boutique, right? I uh, they have had to get these little. In fact, I'll tell you what. Hold on, I'll show you what they give us. They give us two seconds. Entertain the, first, the fans. Samples have changed a lot too since they first started. They come. They used to come out in these really um, generous three point five mil, and now they're much smaller. I think they're a mil and a half. They're not nearly as yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're just average samples now. Average plastic for ton samples. Um, the crap. Um, I'll show you. Here we go. I don't even have the names on anymore. See, Sad. people are still getting the seven point fives. See, I'm not. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I, I smell. Maybe I've, it's because I've stopped, stopped buying all the. And they gave him five oh? minis. Five. Yeah. Fucking hell. Maybe they're trying to get rid of them. Um, hold on a second. I'm just trying to get them to sit still, but they're not having it. Right, one, two of them are Fev de Lisieux, and one of them is Oud Ispahan. Oh, that's my roof. Hello. Ta-da. Um, a rare appearance. Ta-da. Hold on. Look at that potato. Um, what are you calling a potato? Is it? There, look. They're the samples I got from Dior. The middle one is, that's Oud Ispahan. That's Fev. And that's oh, Fev. Those look like they're just filled up decant, or that's like exactly what they are. Samples. That is, yep, they that is exactly what they are. Um, let me, Mister Strong Cup. Um, they're just they 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 they're shit. They're just they're just literally all they do is right. They get those little bottles and they just spray them, spray like decant them into them little bottles, and then fucking give you them. They haven't got any labeling on. They haven't got a sprayer. Yeah, they look like um, Ford samples. The four, those are five yeah. mil. Uh, I think they're five mil. Yeah, the Tom Fords were four mil, and they look just like that. And there was a, I had a really good uh, sales assistant at Holt Renfrew. Anytime I'd go in there, whatever he was, the Frederick Mall sales assistant. And regardless of what I purchased, if it was a Frederick Mall or uh, Armani Privé or a Tom Ford, I would always buy through him. And we just had this, yeah. Of, and he really, he really treated me well with the samples. So it was kind of like this. It was the relationship that we had, and and you got to build a good relationship with sales assistants. Find one or yeah. two that you're comfortable with. Purchase all your products through them. Just let them know. You know, you like testing new things, and then you make your decision, your 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 future purchasing decisions from these samples. And you'll find there's a lot of good sales assistants out there, but if you don't know, if they don't know who you are, you're not going to have much luck getting samples. Um, no, that's right. Um, I'll tell you as well. If you if you if you don't build up a good a good rapport with them, if you just build if you, if if they take like a dislike, and I mean it's like anything in life, but if you take if a sales assistant takes a dislike into you, then they can make it like really hard for you to shop. 
you know, I mean, it, it's, yeah, I, I get the, samples the, more often, not for, I never resell samples. It's more for me to send out to friends that don't have the chance to try stuff like this. Not everybody has a Chanel counter or a Frederick Mall counter. Um, and I, I know if, you know, I can get them and instead of reselling them, what most people will do, I, I share them with people that will appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. What's up, Saab? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's it's it's I do I've never sold I've never resold a decant. No, uh, not a decant. A, a but sample. I, at the same time, yeah, no, I won't either. And you I can get a lot of people a think, bit of money for those Dior Privé and those Chanel samples, like uh, yeah. the official Chanel. I think they're two and a half mil. They go for quite a few bucks on eBay. Yeah, um, I think a lot of them. The do what what they also suspect people of doing is going and getting the samples right and just wearing the samples and then going back and getting some more samples so they don't have to buy a bottle. Uh -huh. Do you know what? Do you know? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, Get cozy with one assistant. You know, develop a relationship and and they'll make you happy if you keep buying from them. They do appreciate you too. Yes, that's right. Uh, they will take care of you. If you find one that you like and that likes you, you you're onto a winner. Um, by the way, anybody in the chat, if anybody's got a bottle of Roadster that they want to sell, let us know. Um, I'm looking desperately seeking a backup of Roadster. I looked online the other day and um, Roadster? people are trying to charge a... Sorry. Roadster, Roadster right? At two hundred dollars, I saw somebody trying to charge it for um, one hundred and ten pounds. I saw somebody try to charge for it, and I was like, "You are taking the Michael." Someone is taking the humor out of me there because that is that is just a piss take. Um, I I got my bought my first bottle for like fifty quid. Who's Mike V? He's a he's a, a, a usual. He's around. He's here all the time. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking what Galen wrote here. Why do you need a backup of Roadster? It's not like it's going anywhere. It, it is gone. It's been discontinued, and it's gone from all the discounters. It's try been and find yourself a bottle of Roadster. I did not know you try that. And find a, you try and find yourself a bottle of Roadster. I'm not, you know, I'm not too fussed with Roadster, so I'm not worried. But Brady says his Guerlain lady barely let, let him even touch a bottle. Now, has this always been the case, or is it just because of the lockdown and they're they're worried about spreading infection? Uh, I that man's holding the, the bottle of Derby. What's that? That Brady's Brady's holding a bottle of Derby. She should be throwing bottles into his hands. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's not a cheap fragrance. Um, I was looking at a bottle of Derby, like um, I've just bought a 7.5 ml and of, of the Derby, like an old miniature because I've like I collect miniatures as well, right? And I've just bought one of the old eagle shaped bottles of uh Derby and it's lush. And I would buy one of the new ones, but like if, if you're into buying fragrances like that, they should be throwing bottles into your hand if you're spending that kind of bank. Essays do not like me. Why do you think uh, sales assistants don't like Miami Cuddles? I don't know. Is this a common problem you have, Neil? Could it well, be you? He doesn't buy from brick and mortar, so he's basically what they consider a time waster. Yeah, that's right. Somebody's saying that it's on um, it's on Roadster is on fragrance buy. I can't get I can't get shipping from fragrance buy. If somebody in Canada, Eugene, would like to buy it from Fragrance Buy for us and then ship Fragrance it to uh, is that the Fragrance Buy dot ca? Yeah, yeah. Does uh, does uh, Samir not have it? I don't think so. Um, I could check. Hold on, we'll have a look, shall we? Um, if he has got it, I'd feel like a bit of a tit. Roadster. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I would feel like a bit of a tit if he did have it. I won't lie to you. 
after everything I've just bloody said. Have you spoken to Samir recently? Um, I feel like I seen him about two weeks ago last. I, feel I mean, it's, it's not, website. it shouldn't be for hard to find a bottle of Cartier Roadster. We can do this another time. All yeah, right, yeah, so right. Let's discuss this. Is it okay? First of all, is it okay to lie regardless of what the uh, subject matter is? Is it okay to lie? It's uh, <laughs> is it okay to lie? Um, well, the, I don't know. I mean, if I was, if I had a gun in my head and somebody was like, "Do you wear women's underwear?" Right. And if I, if I knew that, if I knew the answer, if I knew the answer was going to save me life, but it was a lie, then I would lie. Absolutely, sure, sure. But if 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 I'm trying, like, not when you, yeah, I mean, because you're scared. I mean, if I'm, if am I, am I like, am I lying on my CV to try and like get a job, or am I lie? It all depends on the context, right? What they, what what the the to lead on to this subject that we're going to talk about. These people are trying to get money out of you, right? By, by like it's there's money at stake here, and you are falsifying information. That's fraud. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's obtaining money by deception, right? Sammy, I doesn't have a Cartier, by the way, a Roadster, by the way. Sorry, I'm sure we'll be able to nail one down for you. Yeah, that's all right. Sure, Forget by it. The this, um, by the end of this stream, somebody's going to be generous enough uh, that they're going to be offering the ship you want for free because they enjoy right. your content. How about that? Oh, bloody hell, that is what we if somebody come, come, with a, come with a nice little packet of air anthrax as well. There you oh, go. It's okay to lie down having sex. <laughs> Page. It's okay to lie down having sex. You're not a real duck. You lie. <laughs> so that's you, right. Could I be lying? What do you What do you think a perfumer has to gain by lying about his credentials? as being a master perfumer for his brand. I mean, is, is that the story that they're selling? Is it actually important for that to be lied about? Is there gain to be made from that? I think um, there is gain. Ahead. There is gain to be made from it. Um, so there's definitely gain to be made from it. I mean, are you going to buy, are you going to buy a perfume off somebody who isn't a master perfumer, or are you going to buy perfume off someone who is a master perfumer? If you had the choice, which well, would you buy from? Let's take Mosk Milano, for example. They're not perfumers, but they hire perfumers. Yeah. Right? They don't claim to be master perfumers. Nope. But they hire perfumers. That's right. You're absolutely right. Um, they don't claim to be master perfumers. Right. They so does it claim matter? to be a perfume house. They they have an aesthetic. It's very similar to Frederick Mall, um, apart from the price. But the the oh. sorry, go on, go on. I was just going to say no. I was just going to say it. They they literally put. I've got a bottle of uh, Russian tea here somewhere. What? It's two seconds. There it is. Peter, we're not talking about of... anybody specifically, just in general, because it get. It yeah, I know, I know. But the 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 thing is right. The thing is is this mask Milano, like Frederick Mall, has got the name of the name of the perfumer on the top. Since when? It's got Ju it's got Julien Raskinet. I'll tell you. Oh, I'll show you. Hold that on. That must be a new feature because I've never noticed that before. I don't know if you can see. All right, there's Julien Raskinet. Oh wow. Yeah. I did not so know. that's a new that's a new feature maybe when they did the rebrand. I like that a um, lot paying tribute, tribute or homage or respect to whoever created the perfumer. Yeah. It's almost like in credit. books, they always publish the name of the author in every book. Uh, exactly. You don't see Penguin or Random House. You don't see Penguin or Random House saying, oh, we're like a master author. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I think um, that that's a great idea. It, it, it should be. It should be made a thing. Um, something I have found that I think I've like come to like the come to the thing myself. Um, oh, Galen's made a good point there as well. Um, what what I found is is perfume as an industry 
generally, right, is very unregulated. Even um, when it's unregul it's unregulated as in it's got it's got very little standards. Um, they've got away for years and years, and it's lawless. Um, in that it's lawless in that in that it's it's never been like accountable to anyone apart from the brands themselves it's i'll tell you what it's like it's quite like the fashion industry you never see the designer the actual designer like you, you see that like the creative director like heidi slamani heidi slamani when he was at dior got all of the all of the credit for the dior arm got all of the credit for all the clothes but he didn't design Karl Lagerfeld when he was at Chanel he didn't design all those clothes it was his collection he signed off on it right but he um, was the director the leader he was the face behind everything was he was the face he yes but he didn't he did not design everything he didn't design everything he had a team of designers you know um like Jacques Polge, I mean, everybody, everybody talks about the rumours about um, Francois de Machy working on uh, Egoist. But right. that was never revealed. It was always it was always Jacques Polge. When you yeah. go to Guerlain, Guerlain say that they've got a head perfumer, which is Fran which is uh, Thierry Vassa. They don't mention uh, the lady who's now came out with her own brand, so um, Lancessa. Was it, was it Lancessa who worked with him at uh, Guerlain? Who? Sydney Lancessa. Sylvain Delacourt. Sylvain Sylvain Delacourt. Sorry, sorry. Um, I don't know if she, she was a full-on perfumer. I, I don't know if, and... if she's perfuming her own stuff. She makes it seem like she is. Is that a fact? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I don't this know the, what kind the... of formal training she has, but let's. Do you know what makes a master perfumer? Do you need? Is it something that's? Uh, is there an organization that keeps track of this? Is it recorded somewhere? I don't I know. I it's used to find the French government that. Um kind of recognizes uh, some of the great perfumers, and they. They kind of knight them or so when you get a pin. I don't know what other um, – if there's a standard for that or if it's just people going around calling themselves master perfumer. I tried looking for oh, a yeah. list, and there's nothing There's nothing formal out there. I haven't been yeah, able to come up with a list of there all is of nothing. That. Yeah, there is nothing. There is nothing set in stone about who's a, um, who is a master perfumer, but – I did know, and we were talking about this before we came on air, I did know that Oliver Cresp, who's been doing work for years and years and years, um, only got his master perfumery from IFF about three years ago, and it was done at like a ceremony at IFF. Oh, and, really? Yeah, so it was like a ceremony the, at IFF. From the flavoring houses that they work for, knights them? I don't know if the knight them. I don't know if it's. A, I don't know if it's an official title or whether it's just something that. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a like a. Do you have to do a course like a, or pass a test or create a certain number of fragrances? Like, what are the rules behind this? And is there a governing body? Is it regulated? It's, it's really bleak. Here's one. Here's one for you. Right, I've gone on. To, I've put in IFF Master Perfumers into Google, and I have literally just come across. Let's really just come across this little article. I will decline your cookies. Thank you. Fuck you. Start here for a career in the world of fragrance. A curriculum built upon the fundamentals of the fine fragrance creation with fun, with foundational instruction in the world of consumer fragrance. It's a three-year program. Breaks ground and IFF Insight opens the door. Specialized internship opportunities. Apply classroom learning on the job. The program includes an internship at IFF where each student is monitored by a senior IFF perfumer and students learn on the job experience. Um, it's, it's like a foundation course um, taught by vibrant and passionate faculty of industry experts. Students gain an understanding of the fragrance culture. I'll tell you who would be a good person to ask. Do you know that Ashley who used to go on um, Ashley who used to go on Sebastian's uh, channel? Right. 
she would be quite a good person to ask about it. She'd be able to tell you what, what makes it. How many perfumers do you know that have been designated with the master title? All of a crest. I think, I think Wasser has that, that red pin that we talk about in Francis K. I would imagine Olivier Polge has the title as well, but I, I can't, I can't think of too many. Sheldrake will have it. Oh, Anybody will, who works, I'll tell you. Actor, is that like something that you wish upon? No, I would think that anybody who went through, who was affiliated with Chanel would have it. That's what I mean by that. I don't think Chanel would have it any other way. Does that but, make sense? First of all, is he a certified perfumer? I would have thought so after 30 odd years. If he's not, he's been doing something wrong. He should be if he isn't. Um, he's a gifted amateur if he isn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, right. Yeah, it would, it would surprise it would surprise me greatly if if Christopher Sheldrake wasn't. I'll tell you who else as well. Um, I'll tell you who else would be as well. Ropion. I know Ropion's been designated a master perfumer by IFF. Yeah. Um, Roussel. Yeah. Marie um, Roussel, sure. Bourdon. Maurice Roussel. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Pierre Bourdon, yeah, Pierre Bourdon. Pierre Bourdon's probably Pierre Bourdon's the best of his generation. If we're being, if we're being, if we're being like objective, objective if, you, if, you, if we're right. being, if we're being objective, if we're trying to be objective, as being as as if I had this right, put it like this: if I put is my favorite because, perfumer out there, is it is it because he's created Kuros, your favorite perfume of all time? I'll tell you. I'll tell you another thing. I think it's the um, it's not my favorite perfume of all time. Sheldrake got his master's from Bath and Body Works. <laughs> I think they're just trying to stir you up there. He's um he can't. I'm in a good mood. Um what what am I what was I gonna say? You've thrown us off there. Um You're talking about Bourdon. Pierre Bourdon, Pierre Bourdon's provenance, that's what I was gonna say. Pierre Bourdon was um Edouard Rudnitska's only uh student. Mm. So he was taught Edmund Edward Edward Rudnitska. Yeah, it was he was the only person. He was the only person that Rudnitska taught, and Rudnitska was like one of the best. He was like one of the best outside of Girl On. All right, you know. Tell me, Cecile Zarokian is not the most beautiful female perfumer alive. She's not the most beautiful perfumer alive. She's got to be one Once. of the. Closest. I have no doubt that's just one of them. There's a little thing on her on Instagram today. She posts, and I was like, man, so easy on the eyes. <laughs> You've put a little thing on her on Instagram. You've got a little thing for her on Instagram. Funny ball. <laughs> um, oh, funny ball. Hmm. I never thought of that. Funny balls. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> really? <laughs> Funny balls. Oh, look at this! <laughs> oh, I met Cecile. She dances like crazy after a few drinks. Oh, oh, Peter. She's you friends. Something to tell she... I believe she. Well, she will be with a name like Cecile Zorokian. Zorokian doesn't necessarily mean French. Cecile is though. I am not having a slush. I am having. Humor for Jeroboam is the hottest. Who is that? I've never heard of them. <laughs> I've heard of them, but I'm not very familiar. Zorokian's Armenian, yeah. Armenian oh, sounds yeah, Zorokian. Yeah, it sounds it's Armenian, not to be fair. Sorry. Oh, what's the other? Um, there's another female. She just actually her and and, and um Zorokin just worked for Amouage. There's another one, a blonde one. Remind me of her name, Mackenzie. Oh, God, Mackenzie something. I'll tell you what I saw the other day as well. Um, not to change the subject, but I saw Renault uh, completely off Simon subject. the other day. Sorry, we've gone completely off subject. Talking about oh. is it is it okay to lie about being a master perfumer to 
beautiful female perfumers. I like the one from uh, Papillion. Just, there's a couple of reasons to like her. Okay, what's the first um, reason? Uh, left boob. Oh, no, don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. You're going to cancel us all in this cancel oh, no. culture. It's about time I got canceled. This is one of the after partners. It was late night. She was one of the last to leave. Peter. Peter's been keeping an eye on the last to leave. You know, he went in and swooped. Swooped. Yeah, Jeremy Hines usually decides who can join him in the ranks of master. <laughs> Everyone else is below him. I would imagine Cavalier is a master perfumer as well. And who, Clier? Um, no, Jacques Cavalier. No, I mean who Clier as well. Who? Who Clier? The one who did um Jacques Houclier, the one who did Amen. Amen. Yeah, he did Amen. Jacques Houclier. He did all of the Amens. I don't think I'm understanding you clearly. No, Jacques Houclier. Houclier. H U C L I E R. The name is not, it's new to me. Really? Yeah. Hey man, let's have a look. Just make sure I'm saying it, saying it properly. Look. Liel. Jacques Houclier. Uh, Jacques Houclier, yeah. Type it oh, out. I do not know that. Hold on, I will type it out. Hold on, I'll... Do we know what rich Mitch means? That's right. Someone type it out. H U C L. Does that make sense? Does what make sense? Or what is it you keep saying? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Do I know what you mean? That's right, I, Sean. I'm I'm not familiar with this name at all. Jack Oakley, I can't believe that. I did not I'm very know surprised. That. I never knew the perfumer for Amen. It was Jacques Cochlier. I still find it hard to believe. That you don't know who it is? Yeah. But you're right. I've never heard of this person. He's been around for years, Jacques Cochlier. Davidoff, Boucheron, Ex Nihilo, Gucci. He did gu Guilty Poor Home. He did oh, some big God. perfumes. Amen. He did almost all of the Amens. Yeah, he did, yeah. Does my perfumer claim to be a master? I'm not sure. You know, I may have called him a master perfumer in my video, but I don't actually know if he has that title. And it wasn't How long has been around for. Oh man, for a long time. Um, I have to double check on that. What's up, Luke? Lucas Poe. So, so there was an interesting thing that happened on Facebook today. Um, Frederick Moll's doing uh, one of those Zoom master classes tomorrow, and and one of the sale, like a Frederick Moll sales rep from, I think Name and Marcus, one of the Name and Marcus divisions, came on this Frederick Mall fan page and she's like, Hey, Hey, sign up, you know, inbox me for uh, the zoom master class tomorrow with master perfumer Frederick mall. And uh, I'll give you a seven mil mini with every purchase. And I was like, I hardly ever comment on Facebook, but I couldn't let this go. And I was like, Frederick mall is not a, a perfumer. And then she comes back. She's like, Oh yeah, he is. And he isn't. And, I just said that, you know, with ber to be in my to be brevity in my post or something like that. And I was like, well, brevity means to be brief. It would have been easier for you to leave that out instead of mislead people and tell them that Frederick Mull is actually a perfumer, let alone master perfumer. It would have been easier uh, to leave it out if you wanted to be brief. And then she ended up ended uh editing her post but i was like see what a sales assistant will do for a, a pitch or to make a few bucks yeah. it's just like yeah. it's dishonest and it's unnecessary and it, it leads people 
you know, not everybody's aware of uh, what Frederick Mall does. People might believe that. And then that this is how rumors start. Yep. And stories. Could, couldn't agree more. No, you're totally right. Um, she has she has tried to get away with one. That's what she's done. She's thought to herself, I'll 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 just say something and ninety nine percent of people won't challenge me. And yeah. you have. And yeah. she's had to edit her post because this is something that this is something that we encounter. Um, almost everybody in this chat will know more, right? There's 120 people in, right? So, and I would say at least 100 of them know more than what the sales associates do because to them it's a job, to you it's a passion, and just by that, just by that, that that, that natural, that natural like inquisitiveness that people have for things that they care about, right. you will find out more than you need to. To them, it's just a job. Yeah. Um, and this is this is something we were saying. This is something that goes back to what we were saying earlier about um, about about sales assistants and finding a good one. If you can find a sales assistant, right, who feels the same way you do about perfume, you, you're onto a winner. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean. Um, does that make sense? It does. It make sense. I'm gonna have to start saying that instead. But, but, you know, she started um, with Master Perfumer, and then she sort of backed up. He is a Master Perfumer, but he isn't a Master Perfumer. He works with perfumers. I'm like, those are two different things. And you knew the truth from the beginning, yet you, you still went and and you misled, you know, your, your post. It's just dishonest. Yeah. And what's the yeah. point of it, really? Is it, is it a, a sales tactic? What do you get out of being dishonest? In this particular case, there's not much to benefit. And the tickets were free, weren't they? They were free, but you know, usually at the end of a master class, they try and push something on you. It's a sales pitch. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it, it is a sales pitch. What she could be trying to do is she could be trying to she could be trying to make it seem as though she knows what she's talking about. And trying to build up like capital, like yeah. like social capital, social capital with you, yeah. And it could it could like so that she gets more credence, and what that would do is that would make it her easier for her to sell you something. For sure, for sure. It's 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 very sly. This is where this is where I mean to be to be fair. What 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 we're tapping into, um. To be fair, what we're tapping into is is something that's gone back hundreds and like hundreds of years. It's the it's the tension between between sales and art. You know, like it's it's like it's it's like the the, the tension between money and and like art, like like Michelangelo, like when he was like creating like the statue of David. I'm sure it was was it Michelangelo or Raphael. It was one of the turtles, yeah. right? And that when they were create when they were creating the statue um, of Michelangelo, I'm sure they ran out. When they were creating the statue of David, they ran out of money, and they had to go cap in hand and bet, and like loads of projects all like run out of money all the time because they've run over budget because the artist can't get it right. Um. It's Stuart Watson. the The sales associates know almost nothing. Yeah, it's it's a shame. Yeah, I don't know if they're being dishonest. I think it's just they're not educated and they don't care to be so either. I mean, who wants to sit in the class if you're not into perfume and and listen to those sales pitches? Um. I know a lot of the brands do have those classes for their their sales assistants where they try and teach them a the backstory and the use of materials and the perfumer's name. And they want them to know the basics. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's not, it's not even a job. I mean, the question is, is it okay to lie about being a master perfumer? And in this case, I don't think it is. I don't think it's okay to lie for any case, unless like you said, it's to save your life or something. 
Yeah. I don't know. I think just it's, lying leads to so many other problems, and especially when it has to do around selling a, a, a particular good. Um, I feel like there's a disconnect there. If 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 I find out that one of my favorite brands is lying about who the perfumer is, I love the whole backstory and I love getting to know the brand. And to me, it's not important really who the perfume. Like I want to know who the real perfumer is. I don't want to know just a a story. You know that's important to me. And if I find out it's 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 hoaxy, you know, it's a huge turnoff. Yeah, it is. It is. It is a turnoff. Um, if if you find out a brand's lying to you, or if they've been taught to lie to you, I mean, we could go into the whole creed thing about mm. about like about who's the perfumer for Creed. Well, the whole because backstory all... on Creed sounds like you know a big pile of you know what. Yeah, there's no evidence. There's absolutely no evidence that Creed existed before 1975. I'm sure I've said this before. Um, but there isn't. Um, they may have made things before 1975, but they certainly didn't. Um, they certainly didn't publish it. It wasn't in the public domain. They never paid any taxes. They were never mentioned anywhere before 1975. I can't remember the whole of the article. I read it on base notes. Did I read it on base notes? I may have read it on base notes. It was just saying there's like there's nothing there's nothing in the public domain about about um about somebody says that Hitler wore Tabarome strudel. What? Um, Hitler wore Tabarome strudel. Um, Napoleon Bonaparte created a Ventus. Yeah, that's right. That's what that's what the shit that came out with, wasn't it? Napoleon Bonaparte wore Aventus. Jesus Christ wore Tab of Rome. Yeah. All Eldo smell cheap and synthetic. No, they don't. The smell the smell synthetic. I don't know if they smell cheap. I think that's kind of like the brand uh aesthetic is to smell like that. Yeah. Smell brush. They overcompensate the synthetics. Yeah, that's part of the aesthetic. I bought a bottle of Rien off someone. In fact, I've got to send him some samples. Don't worry, Alec Knight. I'll send you some if you're listening. Uh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I don't know if any version of Anteus can smell like toilet cleaner when there's stuff out there like Dolce Gabbana K, um, uh, Versace Dylan Blue. Aqua de Gio Profumo, those like smell like household cleaners to me. If somebody were to start wiping the counters here with uh, Profumo, I would never say like, why are you cleaning, you know, the counters with perfume? I would just be like, oh, that's like a household cleaner, you know, it would be nothing out of the blue. It would just seem so normal to me. It's, um, I smelled it the other day, I gave it away to a friend. And I smelled it again the other day, and uh, it was dog shit. Profumo? It was total dog shit. Yeah, I smelled it again the other day. Um, someone in the street. You say everything. Was, I was dog just shit, though, unless it's pre nineteen eighty, you consider everything. No. Dog shit. Cool. I came out in eighty one. The other day, and you called it double dog shit. Mm. You said it was what dog was it? Shit. Then you took it back and you said, no, that's double dog shit. We were, <laughs> we were talking about Frederick Mall, Rose and Queer. I asked you what you thought. Uh, yeah, it's that, you said it's, it's really rough. It's really, really bad, that. No, um, it's not. I don't it's a think, lazy release. I, I think you just don't understand it. You should go back. Oh, I understand it. I will go back. No problem. I'll go back. Go back. Um, I will smell it again on April the 12th. I'm going to the shops because that's when we open from lockdown again. And I will smell it again, and I will come back, and no doubt it'll be triple dog shit. <laughs> it'll be triple dog shit. No, it, it just it what what it smelled like was just like what did I say to you? I said to you it was about like a cherry tree where they graft a cherry where they graft two different trees together. Yeah, um, right. And that's what rose and that's what rose and queer. Yeah, that's what rose and queer smells like to me. It smells like what they trees did you rose feel were and leather together. What trees did you feel were grafted together? 
rose and leather. That's it. It just it just smelled yeah, it just smelled like rose and leather. It just smelled like a rose and a leather note. But there's no rose. And, it. It's just uh, geranium, really. Geranium. No, it just smelled rose. I think there's a bit of rose in it. I think it just smells like it smells like weak. It smells like it smells like the rose from um, Portrait of a Lady, uh, but but weaker. And it smells like a like a like an overbearing like an overbearing like brown leather. And it just smells it just smells like he's literally got one in one hand and one in the other hand and then just smashed his hands it, together. It is a perfume. very simple formula, I agree. Um it's it's like a non reduce you can't possibly take anything out of there. You can't reduce it any further, otherwise it would just kind of completely fall apart. Um Jean Claude Elena really he stays true to what his style is. Minimalist. Yeah. But not minimalist like a sense that he was doing with Hermes where everything was lightweight and, and transparent. This is more minimal minimalist. This is much more beefier than his Hermes releases, but it's minimalist in the way of of materials used. See, I've got um uh, uh, it, to me, it smells very similar in structure to Vetiver Tonka, which is literally a complex, not a complex, but like a more complex Tonka note, and then just just a brazen Vetiver and just smashed together like mm. that. And it, it's two notes. He's, it, he's done this quite a few times in his career. I can't think of any other off the top of my head, but... He does it. He, he does it with um. He does it with rose and spice. He did it with declaration, and he did it with um, portrait of a lady. Did he do portrait of a lady? No, he didn't. Sorry, that's a lie. Do um, when he did it with, uh, he, it's like a spice and a rose. He, he'll con. He uses like you know how I like contrast in in fragrances, right? Um, it it it's good, but then. There's, it's, how can I put it? You know, when you get like, in, in Chorus, in Chorus, right, there's, there's like, obviously the pissy, there's like the pissy, animalic, fecal, like, start, and then it dries down to soap, right? Mm -hmm. But it goes through phases. Jean-Claude and Elena tends, to, his contrast tends to be all the way through, and it doesn't it doesn't necessarily develop, right? It's just it's just one perfume, but that 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 they're contrasted from top, middle, and bottom. Um and the top in the top see we'll take vetiver tonka. There's vetiver and tonka at the top, there's mm -hmm. vetiver and tonka in the middle, and there's vetiver and tonka at the base. Okay. And it's a contra it's a contrast all the way through, no doubt. Right, but it right. doesn't change very much. I don't think he does complex fragrances, and I prefer. I think I think there's less skill in that, and it's less difficult to do, and it's less pleasing than it is for something like Koros, which has a top, right, that is completely different from the base. Right. Does that make Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're saying his perfumes are linear. Yes, that's right. That's yes. I've just farted about there for ten minutes, so like, but yes, his perfumes are linear, but they've also got contrast. They are linear. No, I don't know. Like they may be linear, but they're quite diffusive, which to me makes it seem like they are changing. Uh, you know, they almost get like with Terre de Hermes. It's it's done in a way where. It um, the way it evaporates off your skin, it just kind of it, it on me. It just gets richer and bolder, and and it grows. It morphs in in this. I don't know, and that's where I find the complexity. It's not necessarily in the pattern of the notes shifting. It's it's the way that the fragrance develops. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. You're gonna to have to like like flesh that out a bit for us because I don't understand. If if a fragrance, if a fragrance, if, I, if a I, fragrance isn't complex, how does it develop? It develops in uh, 
the 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 way it radiates off of your skin. To me, Terra de Hermes is very different in the opening where it's very sharp and crystal clear. And then the base, like by the time it dries down, it's powdery, not in the sense of powder, but it's blurry. So it's quite different. And that's where I find the complexity. See, I'm struggling with that. Struggling to come to terms with that. Here's one for you. Here's another why we're talking about complexity. And I'm staring at my creeds. Do you think any of the creeds are complex? In the in the sense I mean them, not in the sense you mean complex. Where they change constantly? Yeah. Yeah. Where they change at all. I honestly I think they're all very linear. I don't know creed enough to discuss them in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Um, I, I think, think I think they're all you know, very I linear. Aventus enough. I thought Aventus had enough complexity to keep it interesting. I mean, yeah. it's not a boring that, fragrance, that's for sure. No, it's not a boring fragrance. I just, I no. Let us put that another way. I think Aventus is boring in the fact that I think it smells like a million other things. You've got to remember, I was, I, I smelled Aventus like I smelled Aventus when it was like originally out and i just thought well that just smells like something that i'm not into that's not my taste and then after like four or five years when it obviously like all the hype had like gone up massively about it i thought fucking hell i'll go back and smell it again i went back and smelled it again and by this point invictus aqua invictus and invictus aqua and all and all the other cloak like all the other like fresh sweet fuck what was that i was my glass all right um, all these other fresh, sweet things that came out, and it smelled like everything else. And I was like, "Well, I'm not really interested in this." And then, obviously, it got a uh, the 120 mil bottles got discontinued, and everybody started crying, fucking like bullshit. So I thought I saw 120 mil come up, so I bought it. I have a feeling that vintage fragrances will always feel like they're more complex than modern ones. And it's not so much um, the use of the perfumer. It's, it's because of the notes. The notes themselves, the materials are more complex back then than they are today. You know, today they're, they're you know, all the good stuff has been extracted from them. Yeah. You know. All the allergens, all the the fibers, the pit, the the fruit of the note, the all danger, that, right? All that's all the good stuff. That's the stuff that gave them character. That's all gone. So you can't. It's it's kind of unfair to compare a twenty twenty perfume than one from nineteen eighty. It's not unfair. It's completely fair. It's just you, oh, you have playing, to. You're playing by completely different rules. No, that's true. Right. I get what you mean by that. Today, the patchouli, um, most of the naturals, the rose today is not the same as it what it was 30 years ago. And I wonder because no. of that, ha have they been harvesting or, or growing them differently? The What will happen is, is that you'll find that people get um, – people get – like when I say people brands, brands will look to secure the supply, and then what they'll do is they'll look to grow it as efficiently as possible. Right. So they they'll they'll find a standardized way of doing it. It's the same as it's the same as McDonald's. Like Louis Vuitton makes makes perfumes like McDonald's make chips. They look to standardize everything as soon as it it, it all comes from it all comes from like the the theory that you should be able to go to a McDonald's in, in the jungle in Brazil and get the same chips that you would get if you walk down London, uh, Oxford Street. Right. But I, ima I would um, imagine it, sm it would smell quite different in China than it would in New York City. I mean, taste different. Uh, the, um, not, unless, not unless um, there was a, re a good reason for it, like different regulations. If it was up to the perfume brands themselves, everything would smell the same because then it would be less work for them. It's more efficient. It'd save them money. And it goes back to what we were saying. 
At Sorry. least they might have different things on the menu. Well, quite, yeah. Um, yeah, they would have different things on the menu because of cultural things. It's a, we're getting into we're getting into um we're getting into um we're getting into talk about like what the the rights and wrongs and the pluses and minuses of globalization here. Yeah, and that's, um, that's the reason is to make everything more cheaper or affordable. Yeah, it's it's all about increasing the profit margin, um, and we're not. And then, but the thing is, is that I'd be the first to then complain about prices for Rogers or for um, House of Matriarch, who uses naturals and everything like that. Um, like, so I can't. I feel a bit hypocritical when I when I slate people for stuff like that. So it's it's there's a balancing act. You pay your money and you take your choice. Um, and it's it's in the fragrance in the fragrance landscape. There's enough there's enough um, diversity for everybody. There's there's hardly anybody there's hardly anybody that says that they can't find something that they enjoy. It's like we can all say that like stuff's changed and stuff's different, but can't say anything that like nobody goes without. Should we put the link out? Does somebody want to come on? Yeah, got to be somebody who hasn't been on before, like Galen. <laughs> We're still waiting for Galen to come on from the last stream. I hope he's, he's still cry wanking. He's still crying into his. He's still crying into his fucking into his cock. I think he gave us some some cheap excuse about having to work or something like that. He's as if he's he's, he's sitting listening to this at work. You can sit and talk about it at work. So have you discovered yeah, anything new in the last few days? Have I discovered anything new in the last few days? What did I get this week? Um, I received a perfume from Peter, which is Aritzia Le Grand uh, Scotch Lavender. Okay. Um, that's quite nice. It's a nice lavender. No, it smells a lot like Caron Pour en Homme. Apart from it's more ambery in the base than it is vanilla. Um, Which is a very nice perfume, even in its simplicity. Yes. It's very simple. It smells it's it smells nice. Um I'm trying to think I think the next thing I'm gonna get is gonna be Tur de Hermes PR perfume. Um, okay. That's the I'm trying to think. I I did receive something this week or on Saturday, but I can't remember what it is. Oh, I got some. Um, I got some bottles. I got some hundred mil bottles because I bought uh, Witness by Jacques Bogart, and the sprayer was fucked. So I had to. I had to get some pliers and take off the and take off the sprayer and then decant it into like this hundred mil bottle that I bought. How does that make you so, feel? Losing the original pff, bottle. Pretty pissed off. I've still yeah. got the bottle in storage. I bet you um, that, hurt. but. Yeah, that was a pain in the ass. I must admit, um, it was a real pain in the ass. Um, but there we are. Um, at least I had, at least I had some sort of way of, because it's such a rare fragrance. I got it for a really good price as well. So it's just in a clear bottle now. Um, never smelt it. Never smelt it. Tom Ford's brand didn't exist before two thousand and six. That's when Tom Ford was incorporated, I believe. I don't. I don't get what he means by that. If you're worried about perfume quality, you look at Tom. Didn't exist. Well, that's a good point. Um, Tom Ford uses synthetics a lot. Um, it's if anybody from the if anybody from the um, chat wants to recommend. Um, Mitch, Sean, I do not have a two hundred mil Leon. Mitch um, doesn't have any Lily on. Yeah, that's right. No, I do. I've got a little decan from Audrey Jane, which was very nice of her. Um, was, that's that's how I know. After you trashed it. That's right. She did. Yes, she asked for it back. <laughs> Rightfully so. She, she can't have it because it's crap. You know, I, I can't, I can't believe it. with all the stuff that they're putting out nowadays that you don't like Lily on. It's it's it just mate. Honestly, it smells like a, it smells like 
It smells like cake mix. It smells it smells like gloopy and thick and dense. Does it doesn't smell anything like cake mix. It smells like like dank cake mix. It, it <laughs> smells it smell it smells like it smells like the viscosity, do you know like the like the like saying it smells like salami. It doesn't smell like neither of the two. It can't possibly it, smell like cake mix. <laughs> It smells like cake mix. Where's the Dairy Queen? Candles? Were you at Dairy Queen today? We had Dairy Queen. I don't know what that is. You don't have a Dairy Queen in the UK? Not at all. Damn, you don't know what you're missing. You've never had like one of those Dairy Queen blizzards. It's like I, I literally have, and then you put like, literally have no idea to what you refer with mm. your crazy Canadian effect. <laughs> I think it's an American. Oh, there it is. It's right in front. Oh God! It'd be made of e numbers and e numbers and bullshit. I've just offended three hundred and sixty million people now, haven't I? You know, Scent of the day infusion deris infusion deris is nice. We have a real queen. That's right, Caboose. We have a real queen. Uh, now Honestly. that could be a marketing brief for somebody. <laughs> a cake mix. A cake mix. This right, I'll tell you what. I've just smelled the Leon, not on my skin, but from the air. And do you know what it smells like? It smells like a bandage. It's got a really medicinal vibe from the um, from the from, from the, the cap, from the cake. Right? It smells like candle the cake. That's right. It's like a, like like somebody's candles. put like a band aid and uh, batter. God, I really get the smoke from it when it's when it's not on my skin. Oh, it smells like a Beaufort. It smells like a Beaufort London when it's not on my skin. It smells completely different when it's not on my skin. Um, I wonder. I wonder if anyone's going to come on. Have you smelled equipage from Hermes? I've got it. Uh, no, have I? I've got. You, I've got. Yes, I've got it. Let me get my bottle. I've, One moment. I've got a vintage. Hold on a second. I've got a vintage. I'll get it out. Oop, it's just you and me, chat. Oh, shit. That's going to fall. Right. Hold on. No dead air. No dead air. No dead air. I'm going to have to go for a slosh in a minute. So he's going to be left with you. There it is. Equipage. Equipage. Right. I've got my equipage. I've got mine. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the. Uh, I'm going to go to the bog. I'll be back in a minute. So keep them entertained. Nick, Hold it on. doesn't smell like any of them. I think. Uh, I think the duck just woke up from his hibernation. All right, so let's give equipage a whirl. This is how rumors start, and these reviews will end up on for granted because some. It's very floral. It's floral and leather, I would say. Smoky, citrusy. I want to say there's jasmine in here. Like queer canage. Ah, uh, like queer canage. Not exactly. I think queer canage is more buttery. This smells almost like there's something animalic in here. It's been such a long time since I've worn this. But it is smoky. I don't remember it being this smoky. But it's spicy as well. Let me see what's in here. And I have the equipage geranium as well, which is, it's nice for the warmer weather. It's got a nice mint note in it.
woody, aromatic, warm, spicy, earthy, floral, fresh, spicy, mossy. Nineteen seventy, Brazilian rosewood, clary, sage, nutmeg, flower, aldehydes, bergamot, orange, carnation, pine tree needles, cinnamon, lily of the valley, jasmine, hyssop, oak moss, vetiver, patchouli, tonka bean, musk, vanilla, and amber. None of those really stick out. It's it is quite complex, and it is it's it's not modern at all. What fragrance does my mirror remind me of? Oh, wow. Great question. I would say something that sparkles uh, a contrast of, of light and shadow. How about uh, Chanel number 18? That's got a lot of reflection of, of light and musks. I don't know. That's a good question. What would you say? I got a comment recently. Somebody found, uh, somebody saw this mirror in another YouTuber's videos asking me where I had gotten it from. I've never seen the mirror anywhere on any other YouTuber's channels. Thoughts on music for a while for spring? Uh, I think it could work, might be a little bit too sweet for spring. I think it's got one of the best uses of pineapple. I love music for a while. Sorry. I went and got a bottle of water and knocked you off. So, I've got me equipage. Equipage is is yeah, it's a complex fragrance. I never, you know, I completely forgot about it. It's uh a very complex I'm just spraying it on. Give it a couple of minutes. And it's very well blended. Who made it? Um, was it a master perfumer or a liar? Guy Robert. I think it was Guy, yeah, Guy Robert. Guy Robert. An aromatic, spicy, it's, and woody. It's It's got similar vibes to Polo Green. It has a bite to it. It has kick. Has it got mint in it? Has it got mint in it? I didn't see mint come up, but... I've got a vintage. Hold up. I'll show you. I don't necessarily find it minty. Oh, that's an interesting looking bottle. Yeah, it's a vintage one. Put us on full screen. <laughs> yeah, let me just figure out how to do that. Oh, shit. Sure. Hold on, I'll see if I can get somewhere better with light. There you go. I don't know if that's any better. For that's you. an interesting top. It is just a just a plastic top. I think it's a nineties vintage. It's either nineties or eighties. Um, yeah, it's just a tester. But I mean, when you're dealing with vintages, sometimes you've just got to get testers. Do you know what I mean? I've never seen that bottle before, ever. First time seeing that. Really? Yeah. It's uh. I've got plenty like old school bottles of stuff, um, like bottles that have changed throughout the years. Um, hold on, why do I turn my camera off? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's got my bottle of music for a while, thanks to influencer Eugene over here. That's Eugene's impromptu halo. He had a halo. Oh. Is it negative to get a tester? I don't think so. I don't think there's anything wrong with getting a tester. Absolutely not. Sometimes, especially if you collect, um, if you if you want to get a vintage of something, just get what you can get your hands on. 
Um, but if, if you can save a bit of money, it's the same stuff inside. So yeah, you if you get a test or a box, if you're not concerned about that, it's it's worth getting. Uh, usually testers, yeah. you'll be lucky and get an older formulation of the perfume. Like when I go to department stores here in Toronto, I can still find testers of vintage Fahrenheit. Imagine oh, that. Yes. I've seen Absolutely. that quite often. Buy like, them. Not Steal older them. formulations, but vintage with, you know, the old <clears throat> style writing and, and it's got a different shape bottle almost. Yeah. Interesting. I love that. I've got a vintage. I've got a like a proper eighties vintage of um Fahrenheit, and it doesn't half smell like petrol. <laughs> it literally smells like you know, like when you go to the garage and you put like you put petrol into your car, and mm. like you don't you you don't use a glove, and you get like residual petrol on your hand. Yeah, and like. And and just like you go and you go and pay for your petrol and then you get back in the car and then when you sit down in the car and all of a sudden you can just smell petrol and you're like, oh shit, is my car on fire? And then you realize it's actually just like all over your hand. Mm. That's what it's like. That's 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 what that's what like the original Fahrenheit's like. It's like it's like you've got petrol on your hand from the garage. Absolutely. Tester without a cap. I don't know what that means, but I mean if if I wanted a fragrance enough, I would get it without a cap i do prefer caps and i usually don't buy them without a cap but if that's not an issue for you there i don't think there's anything wrong with getting a capless tester yeah say say if like say if like your favorite fragrance say like portrait of a lady got discontinued and like all the bottles in the world disappeared and then there was one for sale on ebay but it had it was without a cap in a box and it was a decent price, or it was the only one you could get, you'd rip their fucking hands off. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's like the kind of predicament you're in when you collect like vintages and stuff like that. You've just gotta you've just gotta fucking pay the money sometimes. There was a um, question here asking about what vintages should he look into, and that's that's a, a really wide open question. I don't think <coughs> with just the it depends. It depends. It really depends on what vintages, on what you want. What what do you want from your vintage collection? Do you want exclusivity? Do you want to? Do you want memories? Do you want? Um, do you want to be able to say to people, "I've got this," and you haven't? Do you want better ingredients? Do you want better perfumes? Do you want we lost you, duck. Duck, I can't hear you. I don't know if you if you cut can out. You hear, can you hear us now? I got you now. All right. All I'm saying is, right, um, how much of that did you get? I was just saying if you can give us your criteria for what you want, you can you I can tell you I could tell you what, what like what to look for. Because it depends what you want from your collection. If you want if you want exclusivity or if you want if you want better ingredients or if you just want to like, if you want memories or something masculine and mossy. Um, masculine and mossy go for a uh, small little poor home. Small little poor arms, like a leather moss smoke bomb. And it's brilliant. Or just go for like the classics, go for stuff like Antaeus and go for, um, Koros, Tsar, Tsar by Van Cleef and Arpels. That's an oak moss bomb. Um, I've never smelled that. It's really nice. It's really nice if you like oak moss. It's a big oak moss fragrance. Lovely. Absolutely love it. Um, it's like a spring. It's like a spring. Smalt O. Yes, I did say Smalt O. Smalt O, poor arm. Hello, Jonathan. Balenciaga, poor arm. Balenciaga. I've got like I've got like 300 mils of Balenciaga, poor arm. And, and still beautiful across the world for more. Yes, that's right. What's up, Aaron? Absolutely harassing. Harassing people across the world for more. Um, I'm actually... 
I'm actually waiting on a couple of vintage bottles. I'm waiting on a vintage, a, an original, an original run of Ted Lapidus Paul Hom and something by a designer called Kritzia called Moods. I see Kritzia so, quite often. Kritzia, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it looks I think it's really Kritzia. old. Kritzia. Kritzia. It just yeah. looks like something that would smell vintagey of oak moss and vetiver and you know green patchouli. And, yeah, yeah patchouli. it's a big patchouli. It's a big patchouli fragrance, spicy Your patchouli. Alcohol. Yeah, it's really nice. I got a mini of that, um, and that's it. Is it's really nice? It's really nice. Uh, oh, excuse me. Um. We've gone right off topic now. Um, we usually do, though. Yes, that's right. Um, Krusty. It's pronounced Krusty. Krusty. Krizia? Krusty Moods. Krizia? K R I Z I A is the spelling, I believe. Uh, no, I have um, not tried Toba Color yet. And I'm hearing kind of conflicting. Reviews. Um, I don't know when it'll be available here, but I'll pick up a bottle as soon as it comes. Some people love yeah. it. Some people don't really care for it. I think I'll Custody be. On, does. You know, I already imagine what I think it'll smell like, and it, it won't be one of my favorite releases. the The amount of sweetness sounds like it's overbearing for me. One thing I, I don't do well with is sweet and metallic. I don't like metallic. Yeah. What don't you like about metallic? I, I don't know. Uh, it might be just like a subconscious thing because I work with tools all day and they're, you know, the color of metal. Yeah. They're very silver, gray. It reminds you of something you want to get away from. Yeah. That's a good point. Kind of dreary. Yeah, I, I did boring. Think yet i'm not sure what i think about this what is it patchouli ardent i'm i'm on the fence i, I like patchouli ardent do you i do i think it's a fresh i think it's i'll tell you what right instead of all the bros buying stuff like um aventus and invictus and all of that sort of thing they should go out and they should buy themselves patchouli ardent because it's a very pleasant it's a very easy going but different um signature scent for somebody i think so if you're out there and you're looking for a signature scent you want to spend some money right but you want to get something quality and be different get yourself a truly hard dent um i think it's a good i think it's a good bro fragrance it's not even one of my favorites from that line i would place it somewhere in the middle uh Somebody posted something here that I, I caught my eye, and now I lost it. Oh. Patchouli Ardent smells like Te Noir. It, it must What's be the that? fig. They both, both have fig. I think Patchouli Ardent has rose as well, which is in Te Noir. Uh, rose fig. Rose and fig. It's funny. I wore. Uh, I remember wearing um, Tain War to work several years ago, and um, my supervisor hunted me down, and he said, "You, I've been chasing that smell around the shop the whole day, and whatever you're wearing reminds me of the tea my mother used to drink." And I was like, "Wow, that's so interesting." That's interesting. Yeah, that he was able to pick that up. Isn't it? And, and isn't it funny when? Yeah, isn't it funny that you get the people around you to smell what you're wearing, and they smell something completely different to what you're what to what you're picking up. This is this is the comment. I've never been big on sweet tobacco scents, so I think tobacco is a really tricky note, and most people use it today in a way that's very sweet. And other ways you can use it is a green tobacco, but 
that's almost like in a bitter sense. So I don't think the sales would be as profitable in a, in a green bitter tobacco than a sweet one. I think that's the reason why most brands do a sweet tobacco because it's an easy sell. Yeah. How often it's, do you find the green bitter tobacco? They're challenging. Like look at the Versace, the dreamer, it's not easy to wear or, even I think one of the greatest tobacco scents of all time is Guerlain Vetiver, but again, it's a very green, dry, herbal tobacco. It's not pipe um, tobacco. It's not cherry laced. There's no sweetness in it. Tobacco Reserve, I think it's called by Aramis, is a very hard fragrance to wear. Um, it is extremely green, green going brown. And not and not 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 necessarily natural smelling, but like true to the leaf. Um, and it's very it's very it's beautiful. I think you would quite like it if you want to be challenged. Um, you might quite like it, and it's cheap as chips. It's been discontinued. Yeah. Sorry. I'll keep pressing the button. I know I've tried Aramis, uh, this this Havana, but I can't remember it for some reason. Tobacco Reserve. Uh, I can't remember that either. Fumery Turk. Yeah, Fumery Turk's beautiful. Um, Fade On. Fade On is quite bitter. Fade On's tobacco is tobacco. What's it called? Tobacco. Tobacco Rouge. Fade on. I actually, um, I actually thought about this comment before. H twenty four could easily be in it. This, this comment actually came to my mind. What you thought that as well? Yeah, it's something that ran, it was a thought that I observed. I'm gonna get it. I'm getting it. Um, Greggy's posting me order, so the next live stream we do, we'll be able to talk about it if you want. Um. It's, it's, I don't know whether I'm looking forward to it or whether I'm not. H24? Yeah. I'm more looking forward to um, the DS and Durga and the tower. So the contacts gonna... of that uh, honest J-bone of um, MFK and the, the H24, I think I'll save my thoughts for video. I don't want it to get lost in here in a three hour live stream and then I'll never post about it later. Yeah. But have you smelt the H24? Have I? No, Honest J-Bone, he's asking. Oh, Honest J-Bone, sorry. I'm assuming he's asking about H24. Have you got any Sizzly? I have the Eau de Campagne. Yeah, the Eau de Campagne. The the Jean Claude Elena. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful on a woman. Um, and I I can't. Absolutely. I think it's beautiful on any gender. It's very crisp and fresh and green, very verdant. You know, very outdoorsy. That is an yeah. excellent outdoor, true, natural, realistic green perfume. One of the best I've ever come across. Yes. I would I would agree with that. Um, unlike it's not so unlike the latest Hermes. <laughs> unlike Unlike. It's green. H twenty four is very green. It's all green. Is it? uh, but it's, it's not green. It's not a natural green. It's a very uh The word is, I don't want to say synthetic. Yeah, it's synthetic, but it's it's more of a, like the, any green notes are, are really drowned out in, in this melon jolly rancher kind of thing going on, this plasticky jolly rancher. Uh so it feels it feels it feels fake not necessarily it's so unnatural is what it is 
Yeah. It's like concentrated orange juice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like a like 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 it was more of a drawing than a photograph. It's not photorealistic. It's yeah, more like, of a like a print of a, a a painting. Yes, that's right. That's a good way of putting it. Like a picture of a picture. Right, 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 right. I get a lot of lemon in. Uh, Brian says he gets a lot of grapefruit in it. I get more lemon. To me, it's like a lemon sucker, a le lemon lollipop. Yeah, like A numbers. It's like it, it literally like, smells like Jolly Rancher to me. Yeah, like boiled sweets. <laughs> yeah, plasticky boiled sweets, and then this huge slug of uh, Ambroxan in the base, like massive. Where it just oh, com no. completely loses its soul by the time it gets in the dry down. Uh, she's trying to establish a new line, isn't she? She's trying to put her own imprint on. Yeah, totally. On, um, totally took away from from the the uh, the Hermes aesthetic. You know, the horses, the leather, the woods. Yeah. So I mean. Oh, excuse me. You know, so, this was a huge yeah. release. This is, I don't think people understand how big of a release this was. This is, you know, from the last, Hermes yeah. was really the last big French house that was put out a release in this kind of like this digital era. Yeah. And and they went this, the way of, every, it doesn't smell like anything else out there, but it feels like everything else out there. It doesn't smell blue. But it feels like everything else. They've just taken that blue and replaced it with a green. Green. Right. So it's the same feeling, just smells green. Or it, it looks green. So oh, who would you have? If you could have if you could have because when no Nigel replaced Elena. It smells very common. It's absolutely common. And generic. And when I say generic, that doesn't mean, oh, there's other things out there that smell like it. By generic, I mean it's just I, – I'm serious when I say if my kid came and he started wiping my counters down with H24, never in my mind would I say, why is somebody wiping the counters down with a masterpiece? It, it smells like yeah. a household cleanser. It could easily pass yeah. the cleanser. Um, Did you – did you think that the first time you smelled Terre de Hermes? I smelled Terre de Hermes early on in my journey, so I was at a different place. Yeah. But I know what I'm but getting did it, at. Did it give you a similar vibe? Yes. I think from yeah. any perfume in Hermes's line, it takes the most from Terre de Hermes. And it takes – there's vetiver in, in – um, H24. They don't list a lot of the notes, but I get a lot of crisp, fresh, green vetiver. And it takes that vetiver from, from um, Terre de Hermes. And it takes the vanilla from Terre de Hermes and the geranium. It's got geranium in there too. This very sparkling geranium. It takes a lot from Terre de Hermes. And it takes it, it, it almost replaces the orange of Terre de Hermes and turns it green. That that's what she's tried to do, isn't it? She's tried to she's tried to make her own fragrance, but taking Eleanor's Eleanor's sort of Eleanor's base, yeah, Eleanor's like structure. Like. That's what she's done, and and she's just tried to replace it by painting with numbers, and she's gone. She's literally gone note for note and just changed them, but kept the same structure. It, it sounds like it's got exactly the same. very much like a Terre de Hermes EDT. Yeah, the structure's the same, but the notes are different. Yeah, I get it. Um, it's a bit of a cop out, really, isn't it? Um, you know, she oh, hasn't come. At the end of the day, it's a nice fragrance, but it's literally fucking boring. Like it's so uneventful. It's not horrible, yeah. but it's horribly boring. It's it's that's a, that that I mean that to be fair is the state of the perfume. The state of modern perfume, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's unfortunate. But at the same time, like, all this sounds horrible, but if I was stuck at the duty-free, 
it is probably one of the things that I would prefer over most of the other things. It's really well made. It's super smooth. And, you know, the craftsmanship is there. It's just so utterly boring. Like beyond boring. I love that they try to use a green theme. <laughs> oh, yeah, I might change my mind. Month or two. But this is my first impression. Yeah. And, you know, I could literally fucking wipe shit all over me. And I'm going to say it's disgusting. But if you do it every single day, you're going to get used to it. And Jeez. who knows, one day you might even like it. Now, there are some people who would pay a lot of money for it. See, um, I'm getting a sample from Greggy, uh, and but, but I'm expecting. Time, no, we 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 don't wear perfume because we want something to smell. It does smell nice. It smells very nice. But I want more than just nice. I want something to move me. I want something to talk to me. I want something to inspire me. This is just a big old Melanie. Jolly Rancher, and I swear I can pick up elements of Kalone. Um, I thought I smelled bubble gum in the opening. Uh, you know that nars that narcissus, it's there, but it's so fleeting. It adds almost like a yellow touch to it. Yeah. So here's one. Here's a question for you on the on a similar topic. You just said you want something to move you. You want something that speaks to you. When was the last time a perfume actually did that to you? And it's got to be it. It's got to be something like it's got to be a real highlight, and it's got to be something that has like profoundly touched you. Don't just tell us the last perfume you liked, or the last perfume that you thought was good, or the last perfume you thought was great. I want something that literally stopped you. I think the last perfume that I wore that I really enjoyed was last week, a uh, Bellamy Vetiver. Right. Did it change your life? I don't think any perfume is really going to change my life. No, there are some perfumes, though, that stick out. What the point I'm trying to make to you is, right, is that there are some perfumes that will, like, that will always stand out to you as the standout to any like collector of perfumes, but like you, especially, cause I know you, right. I know you, I know you sort of, you know what I mean? Mm. And, and what I'm saying to you is, which was the last perfume that had the effect on you of what you've just described. The last one I wore was Bellamy Vetiver that I loved like every, except for the opening 10 minutes. I despise the opening 10 minutes of Bellamy Vetiver, but everything after that is smooth sailing. It, to me, is it just a connection to earth? Very green, woody, mossy, um, fresh and spite. Not fresh, but spicy. I think it's, you know, one of the best Hermes releases. I think it's one of the best Sheepa releases of the last two decades. I, must I, think I, like can, the I think it can be a flanker to either Mitsuko or... Um, Diagolev, I think it's that good. It's just as interesting. It's probably not as well crafted as Diagolev, like the, the materials, but it's an absolute gorgeous perfume. Are you familiar with it? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, re I prefer it over the original by a considerable distance. Yeah. Um, it's really nice. Um, I got a feeling well, this is like because it's something I smelled earlier on. It didn't have the kind of effect on us that that, that what you're saying it did. Um, it, but what what it did smell like, what it did smell like to me, because this was when was it? When did I smell Bellamy Vetiver? I smelled Bellamy Vetiver before O Intense Vetiver. Do you know the Tour de Hermes O Intense Vetiver? Yeah, of course. I smell. I smelled. Bellamy Vetiver before that, and I thought one of the things that Hermes did was that they just stuck Vetiver on something and called it a flanker. <laughs> you know? I thought right. that was just something that Hermes did. I think it's a coincidence um, that they Vetivered both of those fragrances. Because, yeah. I'll be honest, I don't find anything vetiver about it. Really? 
Um, maybe that the, that could be the, the the harsh ten minutes in the top there. It's very green, sticky, and sweet to me. Uh, it, it but it actually feels more like a, a a balsam, a woody balsam than vetiver. Um, I, I get the vetiver from it. I, I think don't, it's the same vetiver that's in vetiver tonka. I don't think it's oversaturated in uh, vetiver by any chance. I get much more vetiver in Owen Tense vetiver. Yes, yes, I would, I would agree with that. Yeah, there's a lot more vetiver in there than there is in. Um, than I there think it's is in... really well blended, like very smooth and and and, and very well balanced. Very nice um, rounded out. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It is. It's a beautiful perfume. I just don't think it. Uh, I just don't think it would. Um, it wouldn't. It doesn't move as the way that the way that you're saying. Um, I felt it, and we had this discussion with uh, even Thomas, and he was a big fan of it. And yeah. Uh, there was a I wore a Sheepra the day before, and I was com kind of comparing the two Sheepras, and I was like, you know, I think I enjoyed Bellamy Vetiver better than that other. Sh I can't remember. Do you remember which Sheepra it was that I compared it to? I wore was a it not two days in a row? Was it not Palatan? Was it not Palatan? No, no. It's been a while since I wore that. What sheep bro was it? I'm sure it was Palatine, you know. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've worn that. I wonder what it was. You know what I did what get a sample of recently? Uh, Must Go on, Must the Cartier. Yes. Yes, you said this in the um you said this in the WhatsApp group. And oh, what um a beautiful perfume. A beautiful perfume. I thought you said it was shite. Must the Cartier Parfum? Yeah. No, it's absolutely gorgeous. I didn't ah. really watch the Cartier, the, the new Parfum. I found it. Oh, that's it. right. Yes. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. You're right. Of course, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> I found the, the top very bubblegummy. Yeah, I, I, I don't like that one at all. What's with all this bubblegum coming out in... in um? In men's releases, yeah, Zhao, in the parfum version, I found a lot of bubble gum in it, and I really wanted to like this. It was bubble gum and cumin what I got from it. Oof! It's like bubble like gum. Just... No, I was like, okay, this is a strange mix. Um, like bubble gum and cumin, like you've just walked out the Indians and you've decided to chew some chewing gum to clean your breath. Yeah, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to find what I wore that day, but it was an old school. Oh, no. Maybe it was um, Roger. If anybody wants a, um, a Vetiver X straight apart from, look into um, Sultan Vetiver. It's absolutely outstanding. Um, and it lasts forever. Like, you have to wash it off. Um, <clears throat> Infidel Crusher. Just saw that Red Alessence has released BFL's Red Brook Perfumes. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's very sad that he didn't live to see that come out, isn't it? Very sad, but um, I forget now. I don't want to waste any more time. Best vetiver that I ever tried, Sultan Vetiver. It's certainly up there. Um, if anybody wants to suggest any vetivers that I could try, I'd be interested. Um, I'm so I've just ordered bubble gum. Sorry, I'm so over the bubble gum. They need to, you know, yeah, to, uh, keep on with it. Why is bubblegum all of a sudden a trend in men's fragrances? It's absolutely rotten. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Um, the, 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 the sweet, I don't like, I don't like overly sweet fragrances either. Um, 
under my skin and irritated me in the best way possible. That's what I want from everyone. I want it with sensations. Mate, stop, you know, I, I love the contrasts them. in my perfume. Colors, textures, um, warmth. I love lavenders and patchoulis because I can always feel them. You know, I like patchouli to me always feels like a Persian rug, very abrasive, like sandpaper. And then when you add something smooth on there, it's a nice contrast. You know, that's the story that the first time, um, the first time that, um, what's it called? Um, the first time that patchouli appeared in Europe was um, from rugs from the east, and they used to put the patchouli leaves in the rugs to keep the moths from eating them. Really? Yeah, that's the story. Um, that's uh, the story behind Bone Borneo 1834. That's so interesting. Because was, Cause I yeah, that was it like time. a big, thick rug. Yeah, so the rugs used to smell like patchouli. Because they had all the patchouli leaves in them to stop the um, because it keeps keeps moths away. Because moths don't like the smell of patchouli, and that's that's the story behind uh, Borneo 1834. And I have no 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 need no inkling that Serge Lutons would lie to us, unlike Creed, or unlike um, a Mister oh. Bird who shan't be named. Eugene goes up High Street sales assistant and asks about pastels. I love pastels. <laughs> They're so warm and creamy. Oh, I'm not a fan of pastels. I get choky. I get choky vibes from pastels, but I shouldn't know because they are waxy. I like crayons. Just reminds us of school. I don't. I didn't like school. Did what anybody was, here was, actually like H24? I think for a smell, just, you know, judging it for a smell itself, it's not bad. It's certainly not entertaining. Oh, God. It's okay to admit that you like it. It's okay. Nobody can hurt you now. <laughs> You're an adult. You know, you're growing yeah. up. Yeah, we got some people that like it. I guess, you know, if you're judging it from the expectations of a designer level, I would say it's quite good. But as like a complete fragrance and as enthusiast that, that wants all the bells and whistles, it's not very good. Someone saying about Christopher Chong at Amawage, I was watching a Persilase, a Persilase stream the other day, and a Renault Samon was in the chat. Um, I tried to, I think I tried to text you and tell you that he was in the chat because I know you wanted to ask him a couple of questions about how he got his fucking job. Oh, we were discussing that in private. Like we were discussing how do you get a job with one of these big houses, and uh, yeah. somebody. And it's not by going to school or having a university degree. It's uh, yeah. by who I you know. I think that was me. What's that? Yeah. It's, not, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Definitely. Yeah, I, I, I feel this comment too, soulless. Uh, absolutely no character, no individuality. It's just like, it's it's for the herd. It's, it's herd mentality. Yeah. No, I get that. Um, it's it's made to make money. Um, there doesn't seem to be any sort of there doesn't seem to be any sort of like drive to do something different from like that's why designer was, houses. That's why I was so disappointed. Like I had high hope with this Hermes. I know. I rem I remember you saying when your heart sank when you saw the name. When I saw the name and when I saw the typography. You know, it, it everything just looks modern. It feels modern. the The inspiration is like a modern ma modern man's environment. Like, think about that for a moment. What is the modern man's environment? Like that that shouldn't define masculinity. A modern yeah. man's environment today is his workplace, 
is what they're trying to portray. And, and yes. which, which man in today's workforce actually likes what he's doing? Which man is happy? So right away, I feel like, you know, the, the marketing of this is way off. I wonder who did it the marketing. Home with me. Who's the creative director at Hermes? I don't know. It would be interesting to see when they change creative director um, in the same way that, like, like to see who they, who Nigel and Eleanor worked on it to see if they changed the creative director at the same time as they changed the perfumer. Mm. H24 is then... a molecule name. That's, yeah, it does. <laughs> and if you remember my review of Sauvage, I called it a digital fougere. And in their marketing here, Hermes goes ahead and calls H24 a high-tech fougere. Oh, God. Oh, that's so bad. Mm. Uh. So it makes it feel right off the bat very cold and sterile. And it's not very fougere. It has, like, what you think is an element of shaving foam and that it's quickly gone. You know, I don't feel any lavender patchouli like, and I hate to, to box these genres, you know, a fougere, but it feels like Hermes has really put themselves in the box with this release. Yeah. I, I wonder who's like, I wonder who's like, who did the brief. That's why I was asking if they changed the, uh, if they had changed the, what do you call it? Creative director. I have no clue. I, I don't think I've ever known who the director was for Hermes. That'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to find out. See if, um, see if, see if it had changed because then you would know who was writing the briefs for Eleanor or if Eleanor was just given carte blanche. You almost get that feeling like he was. Yes, all this stuff was so different. Um, but then, I mean, is he the type of person to come up with those names? I always think back to Iris Ukiyoe. Ukiyoe. Yeah, I'm sure that has um, more to do with the marketing department. Yeah, yeah. And and see, like, who's head of the marketing? Who's head, who's head of the brand strategy? And do the do they consult the perfumers? It is so sterile and so cold. It's heartless. It has no identity. It doesn't know who it is or who it wants to be. It's it's literally uh, the same fragrance in a sea of fragrances. Like no, it doesn't smell like every other thing out there, but it has the same feeling. Yeah, it feels like Hermes is dropping the ocean of blue fragrances. Yeah, they just turned it green. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, dear. You can tell you're disappointed. I am. I am. I really wanted to like it. Yeah. There's a little bit Ooh. of mintiness in it right in the top. A little like bit of what? A mintiness. Mentholated mintiness. Oh, I like a mint. Yeah. It's fresh. It's clean. It's, you know, the ambroxan is very soapy. Oh, it's such an evil. That's just not what's needed, is it? You know what I mean? It's just fucking everywhere. Let's bring back proper uh, um, uh, not ambergris. Ambergris, yeah, yeah, that's what it that's what it came to replace, isn't it? Ambergris? Ambroxan, yeah. Yeah, even it, though it doesn't smell anything like It's supposed to smell like hot pressed shirts. Or steamed steam iron shirts, you know the the steam that comes off the iron. And I get what yeah. they're trying to do, but it it's not enough. It's it's not enough no. inspiration. No. Like, are there any releases you're looking forward to? Hmm. Not really. I've got nothing on my mind. I've got nothing on what, my mind. What, what should we expect? 
I don't even know what's due out. No, I don't either. Um, I'm starting to think that my um, vintage collection, I can't think of any vintage stuff that I want now. Um, I've collected about as much vintage as like I think I'm going to collect. So I'm starting to look into like more niche and indie stuff. Um, and I'm looking at like like Tower. One of the next fragrances I want is Incense Rose from Tower. Um, one of the next fragrances I want. Obviously, I want pure perfume, but I'm like I'm at sort of like a loss as to like what to buy. I, um, you know what? I, I tried that um, Cartier Must. I I would love to get a bottle of that. The Pure Parfum. Right. The must, the new must, the no, it's old. It's an old perfume. Try and get a vintage. I actually looked them up, but I'm not much of an eBayer. What I, I smelled, I thought it was beautiful. I'll tell you who'll have it. Um, Samia. I, yeah, I like, Samia. Like, Fosco, do you like H24? Do you enjoy it? Or do you just not like tear? Not everything's going to be for everybody, right? I can see yeah. you know, they, they selling th hundreds and thousands, if not millions of bottles of this stuff. It smells good is what they were going for. That was their brief. Just get it to smell good. Yeah. That's another one that's well, kind of irreducible. There's nothing they could absolutely absolutely take out of it to make it feel simpler. Like there's just nothing in there that would be considered not mass appealing. I can't wait to smell it. We'll, we'll do a live stream. Do you want to do a live stream on it or do you want to review it yourself? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I <laughs> I'm not fussed. I need a full when people are talking about people are talking about a rige. Um my experience with a rige has not been good. I got a sample set of the sixth collection and I thought they were just I thought they were all fart and no shit. Um I thought there were I thought there were good ingredients wasted by someone who can't blend. Um if Russian Adam paid somebody to blend them, if he paid like a Roussel or if he paid like a like a rope beyond, so like rope beyond. Rope beyond does their uh, animalics quite well, doesn't he? Like dark I can't stuff. think of any off the top of my. Well, the night, right? Yeah. Um, if he paid like a real perfumer to, to use the to use what he uses, um, then the perfumes will be brilliant. But I, I, I mean, no, I, you know, I don't know Russian Adam from Adam. Um, so I don't know. I don't know Russian Adam. I'm not trying to shit on him, but um, I, I just I just thought those perfumes were just. Oy, I thought they were just far, far too mm -hmm. much money for what they are. I don't care how natural the. Per I don't. Care, I don't care how if there's a hundred year old. It smells a hundred years old. It smells like and not in a good way. It smells like your grandmother's kitchen. You know, uh, it smells like like the house like a house that smells of cabbage. Um, like I've I've got a cabbagey vibe, like a boiled cabbage vibe from a couple of his perfumes, from a couple of the sixth collection. Musk Lave and uh, Queer de Roos. The Queer de Roos really disappointed us from uh, a regional door, and I was really looking forward to that one. What didn't you like about it? It smelled stale. It smelled like it smelled like it smelled like somebody had made like boiled cabbage a couple of days ago and just left the pan and just left the pan on. That's not a good smell. I know it's that not smell. a good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Everybody's grandma made boiled cabbage. Um, and it's not, it's not a nice smell. Um, it's, it's not, it's just, not, it just smells like boiled cabbage. If you smelled the queer de root, like the queer de root smelled stale. Um, Forget about people are saying that 
Fosco uh, says, I'm in a love hate with H24. And I can see what I said. I really want to like it. And I think if I ever do end up, it's just going to be from wearing and wearing and wearing and getting to know something. And, and it's more out of becoming like just really familiar and comfortable with it than actually, you know, a love at first uh, scent thing. And, yes. you know, that could become possible with just about any perfume. Take any perfume from your collection that you don't love and just repeatedly wear it and get to know it. And you're eventually going to start to enjoy it. Yeah. That's not that's no, not the reason I want to like something. No, I, can't I, I really, I, you know, I love the brand. I, I love, you know, what they used to stand for and the stuff they used to create. But this to me was just... It was just extremely underwhelming. Yeah. Uh, I was honestly, I was, when I smelt it, like I got very emotional the first time and I was furious and I'm kind of glad I didn't record any of my thoughts because they were, they were quite harsh. Yeah. They were not good. They were, you know, I would have came across as a very childish. So <laughs> I, I'm kind of glad, you know, I've, I've had this for, I've been wearing it for like six days straight now. And uh, I don't like it m any more than when I first smelt it. No, maybe give it a break and come back to it. I find that helps a lot. For sure. I find that helps a lot. And it can also go the same way as well. It can also go the opposite way, sorry, where you lo yeah, love a perfume. Just get completely <laughs> Yeah, and no, well, no. What you can do is, is that you can love a perfume because I, 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 um, I, I have my collection split in two. I've got an autumn winter collection. I've got an autumn winter rotation and a spring summer collection. So I go six months of the year without wearing, like the autumn winter, and I go six months of the year without wearing any of the spring summer. And sometimes when I rotate back and I've been looking forward to wearing a certain perfume for six months and I rotate back and I smell it again, I think, fucking hell, I don't love that like I used to. Mm. Um, so it can go both ways. Um, you can you can turn on for but the thing is, is to stick with them and ride the changes. And it really does make a huge difference to to like get like like to your, to your enjoyment of your collection yeah. to like rest things to rest things i've actually even got um, of like what would i feel if i were to smell terra de hermes right now for the first time would i feel the exact same way about it would i be underwhelmed the same way i feel about h24 yeah that's what I, that's sort of like what i was getting at before mm. um like when when you said that it was early on in your collecting, that's sort of yeah. like what I was getting at. Like if if you were to drop in any of these perfumes at any different time than what you actually smelled them, would you feel different? Um, uh, would we'll, we'll, we'll never know because that's life. Yeah, that's that's the process you need to go through. That's just life, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? You just can't. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, you smell what you smell when you smell it. Um, there's sometimes that like you're just not ready for something. And sometimes you don't even have an explanation why you love something. It just clicks with you. You know, it works. Yeah. That's, that's some of the best. Some of the best are like that. Some it of just the best are like that. Take you back to your childhood, like a memory. You have some kind of attachment to it. Yeah. Um, See, I love, I, I think I have a lot in, in common with Fosco in, in terms of taste. I love declaration as well. I don't think I, I remember Essence. Is that the Rose one? But I love Declaration. Yeah. It's um, SSLRIs. H2, H24 is the antithesis of SSL, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. <laughs> What's this, Holly? Holly, Holly, you need to, uh, you need to, you need to develop this point, please. Yes, I know, Cuddles. I'm going to smell Bon Monsieur. Don't worry. Uh, Greggy hasn't got it. I actually asked him. Cuddles gets 10 bucks every time he posts that on a YouTube live stream. Yes, that's right. Cuddles, how much do you get per post? Or is it like a lump? He's like, 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 he's like
Who sang it with T and Labdenham? T's an underrated note. T doesn't get the love it deserves as a note. No, he can be boring as well sometimes. Yes. Did you ever smell the Joe Malone teas that you did? Mm -mm. They were really nice. There was one of them, I think it was Oolong Cha. It was something oh, like that. That was Nishane, wasn't it? No, no, no. She didn't Oolong. She didn't. Oolong Cha might be Nishane, but Oolong, she didn't Oolong Tea. Joe Malone did an Oolong Tea and it was bloody gorgeous. And then they discontinued it. Um, I went in and I spoke to the lass and she was like, oh, no, we've discontinued them. Sorry. I was like, oh. Fucking what? Is it, why didn't you give us a heads up, you bitch? You Ooh, just put me Givenchy gentleman away. You know, I was at my mum's house and I found a sample of <gasps> what is he gonna do? What's what he do you gonna think say? I found a sample of? I have no idea. Ta -da, Russian tea. Oh, shit. yeah. Have you got it? Get it out. Go on, spray it. Right here. Smell. Um, have a spray. I found it very rubbery and leathery. Russian tea by Mas Milano. Yeah. Rubbery. Is that not just the cap? Oh no, you haven't got the cap. It's just a, a what's this? A two mil sample. The bottles are only 35 mil, and it does my fucking head. They, they used to be 100 when they... Yeah, I know, for this fucking... Yeah, for like half the price as well. It's fucking scandalous what they did. There's something nice floral story. in here. There's like a purple floral. Is it violet? I know what you mean. It's, it's mint. Correct. Is it mint? There's mint in here, definitely. It could be mentholated. It's mint with raspberry and uh, tea. To me, it was rubbery. I sprayed some on my arm last night. It was rubbery and leathery. Yeah, it's, lo it's a lovely, it's a lovely uh, perfume for when it's raining. Yeah, it, it, like when it gets humid out. Yeah, a lovely fresh clean yeah, it's not clean no it's not clean it's it's fresh and fluid and light keep wearing it you'll get you'll get what the mint the tea everything raspberry <sighs> raspberry tea incense birch mint yeah there's definitely birch wow. in it you're right about that i definitely get the birch from it you only get a thirty five. So that, that's a very unique lineup right there. Raspberry tea yes. and birch mint. Made by Mr. Raskinet. Oh Raskinet. No way. Yeah. He's a, a blooming up and coming perfumer. Yes, he is. He did something for Mall, didn't he? The moon uh the moon. Was it? Uh, yep. Yeah. That's the one that smells like uh, shit. No, that's the night. No, which that's the night. The moon. There's no poo in the night. I mean, in the moon. There's no poo in the moon. Poo is in there's the no night. Poo in the moon. The moon has been wiped clear. <laughs> I haven't smelled. I think this is the only rush um, mask Milano I've smelled. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the house, to be honest. I think Monte Cristo's a, a Mona Diorio ripoff of um, Queer. It's got the same smoke note in it, but it, instead of leather, it's got uh, tobacco. Um, I didn't like Tango. I thought it smelled like Iron Brew. If any, mm -hmm. if there's any British people here, if anybody, if anybody knows what Iron Brew tastes like, the moon is no is farting, no poo. Mike, stop stealing me lines. Natessa. I'm not a big fan. I got a I got a sample set. I won a sample set. Wow, look of, at this. Um, a lot of praise for Mosque yeah. Milano. One of the best modern houses. It didn't, it didn't. <laughs> Alex T's loving the uh, love <laughs> loving loving the fucking the vibe. 
matter of fact tone and the response artistically but not something I often love to wear respect it though the smell of his own shots <laughs> thou shot not I don't know what do you think the next thing I should what do you think the next thing if you could buy me something what would you buy us I would buy you boy Chanel boy Chanel yeah is that a fougere it is. Have you smelled it? Yes, it's a big lavender perfume. Is it not? It is. It's yeah, a pastel. I've thought about that. Pardon. pardon me. <laughs> I've thought about that. I've thought about buying that. What are you laughing at? I love the nose of birch and perfume. Or... No, um... I have thought about buying Boy next. I would just want to get it at the right price. They've just put the prices up. Yeah, four hundred and sixty dollars for a big bottle. Is that Canadian? Canadian, yeah. That's a lot of fucking money for a bottle of perfume. I mean, you get a lot of perfume for it, but bloody hell! I love the use of Must... sandalwood in Boy. It reminds me of. Like what they've done in number five, Bois de Zille, uh, number 22. I almost feel like they're using the same sandalwood. There will be. There will be. They'll do everything in house. Um, so it'll be the same sandalwood, and all. And every time they use sandalwood, it'll be the same sandalwood. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it might not be a bad idea. In fact, it's a good idea. That was a, that was a roller coaster there, wasn't it? Me thinking out loud. Um, It'll probably be a while before we see anything from Chanel. I, I can't yeah, imagine Chanel. Chanel, they'll, Chanel they'll, yeah, they'll do a men's release anytime soon to replace Boy. Boy is probably flying off the rack. Um, they just did Le Leon. Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. Chanel for another year or two, isn't it? Oh yeah, maybe five. I don't think. There will be another men's release. Like uh, <coughs> Blue came out in 2010. That's only 11 years ago. They might do a flanker, um, a sport. It's been a while of since. Of what? Of, of Blue. Oh, Blue. All oh, right. I thought you were talking about boys still. Sorry. Um, what else could they do for Blue? You know, they did a parfum, which is a a darker version, almost like a. You could do a cologne. Blue. Yeah. You could do a cologne. Cologne or sport, yeah. <coughs> Something gone down the wrong way. Oh. Uh, no. What else could they do? Is this a fact? Boy is crazy. Boy is basic. What's this? A new Chanel men's release was supposed to come in twenty twenty. How do you know that? <laughs> what a brilliant idea, mate. Blue, green, BD, fucking hell. Max Forty will be doing something like that somewhere, don't worry. He'll be layering shit that has no right to be fucking layered anywhere. I remember wearing, um, they're talking about gym sense. I remember the bros at the gym used to wear stuff like Versace Eros and um, Polo Red. Polo. The red bottle, is it sport? No. Polo red, no, whatever polo polo sport. red bottle is called. It was very heavy in the Tonka, that syrupy, goopy Tonka. And they would drown out the entire gym with it would irritate the fuck out of me. And I remember one time I'm like, I'm I'm gonna counter this shit. And I took my bottle with Rien and I just took a shower in Rien before I went to the gym. <laughs> The best, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the best uh, perfume for the gym is. It's Polo Sport by Ralph Lauren. Um, it I is sensational. It first came out. Oh, God almighty, it was beautiful. It was my school fragrance. And the fucking birds loved it. Um, it was abs it's absolutely beautiful. I managed to get a Cosme. I just managed to get a Cosme, a vintage Cosme, for about 16 quid, 40 milliliters. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's still beautiful to this day. Uh, the new version's dog shit. Um, 
but, I remember <laughs> buying it when it came out. I, I think I had just gotten the job back then. It was like one of my first jobs. Yeah. When Polo Sport first came out. There's a lot of love for Eros and uh and Polo right in the comments. <laughs> oh god. They got Powerful a feet the route to the gym, trust me. Arrows and Polo Red. Polo Polo Sport. Absolutely beautiful. Feeling, and I'm I'm not even joking. If one of them came out before Carlon's Lummy Dial, that that's where the idea came for it, is from Arrows or that Polo Red. Because it's got that same type of Tonka goopiness. Yeah, Tonka has been a big note over the last 10 years, hasn't it? Mm. Yeah, where they've actually like overdosed it. Like Guerlain's used it in all a lot of their releases. It's part of the Guerlainade, but in small doses, you know, very balanced. And now they're making yeah. entire fragrances based around Tonka, like where Tonka is the theme, it's the headlining note. Yeah. God almighty, when I smell that, it reminds us of being stood in the woods smoking dope. Yeah. That see that polo for me brings back so many memories. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely terrible memories being badly dressed in the woods, being bad when you're like fourteen. Oh, fast perfume and fast women. Nothing wrong with that. The world needs more of both. Absolutely. <laughs> um, original Polo Sport was beautiful in the 90s. Stuart, you are right. Bird de, Beau de Jeu, Musk Ravager. Uh, NC, you are correct. Everything I hate in a bottle. D&GK, Dolce & Gabbana King. There's another lifeless release. It's yeah. like Accountants sat at the uh, briefing table, and they're like, "What is what is the inspiration for this?" All right, Windex, Lysol, you know, anything that's easy going. Yeah, it's 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 rotten. It's properly rotten. It's like a lot of the D and G. It, a lot of D and G stuff. Shit. Um, like the all the all the light blue. Sorry? It's been shit for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. The um, last Dolce Gabbana I seriously enjoyed was the uh, Made in Italy Poor Home. Uh, oh, Masculine was nice. Oh, just Masculine. Masculine was nice. When I say nice, I mean it was nice. I don't mean it was amazing. I mean it was, it was nice. But, um... The like you say, the minutely pour on, yeah, yeah. And I got a bottle, like, nice. I went through a full bottle of that, and then I went and got another bottle, like, uh, to replenish. And it was made in the UK, and instantly I was like, This doesn't, sm I, I didn't know about reformulations back, I wasn't into fragrance, and I was like, yeah. This doesn't smell the same, this actually smells disgusting. It's just this yeah. nasty contrast, this nasty vile. It was just gross. Yeah. It was like wearing bleach. Hey, um, actually, don't let the British make your fucking perfumes. We will ruin them for you. <laughs> Absolutely crap. I'm sitting smelling blue parfum. Have you got blue parfum? I do have all the versions of blue. Which is your favorite? Mm. I don't know if I can answer that. I, I would I would say probably the EDP. Yeah. I regretted I regretted not getting the EDP. Um, but I refuse to have more than one blue fragrance because frankly you don't need one. Mm. You only ever need one blue one blue fragrance because they're all the same. So you might as well get the best one. You might as well get that. That's it. Everybody in the chat, leave which which blue? Which blue do you think is the best? Uh, blue, blue de Chanel. I um, think they're they're all great for for young young men that are just you know in high school or just entering college. But you know, once you pass that stage, it's it's not acceptable. 
Yeah. Unless you don't care about perfume. If you just want one fragrance to smell standard, it's okay, but it's literally yeah. no class or no culture to it. Well, what that's what I was saying about patchouli ardon. I was saying, like, if you point? want... Are you playing with a magnetic cap or something? Yes, I am. Can you hear it? Sorry. It's driving me absolutely insane. Sorry about that, but I know how to get you in the future. Um... <laughs> um what I was saying before about patchouli ardon, if the bros want to smell different from their friends, but also want something that smells like fresh and good, um, I would go with patchouli ardon. I think that would be a great signature scent to rival stuff like, um, cause it'd be complete. It's completely different, but it's really fresh and it's, it, it's got like, it's got something, it's got something about it and it's quality. Um, would you choose that just because it's fresh? It has a fresh, I wouldn't call it fresh, but it certainly has a fresh element to it. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's not just fresh. Right. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that it's just fresh. Right. Because if, if I'm recommending a perfume from that line, it's probably going to be Bois Mysterio or Santal Royale. But, but not anybody wants to wear that. Not not to the bros. You couldn't recommend it to the bros because right. the bros, the bros. But I was saying as like a as a um, as a as a as a like an alternative to all the blue fragrances and all the shit. Um, then I would say bros step away from the blue sh from the blue fragrances. You can do better this way. Yeah, think well. Think back to when you were a bro or or not a frag head, and you would go purchase a fragrance. What was it that you were looking for? Do you remember anything specific? Like before you something obsessed with with you know YouTube or 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 thinking about perfume every day, and you probably only had one or two. When you went to go buy a fragrance, what descriptors did you use to the sales assistant? Some uh, nothing that I smelled to the to the sales assistant. What at my style, I would just go in and I'd just be like, "Oh, what's like, what's new, um, what's different?" But I, I'm not like 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 a bro. Um, I I was like, "What's new? What's different? What smells good?" Um, but it was always more. It was more. It was much more centered around what I wanted rather than what I thought everybody else wanted. Like I used to wear, when I was like 17, I used to wear a uh, Paco Rabanne ultraviolet. Mm. And that shit was, that shit was fucking nuclear. It was fucking That's huge. Violet. And it was, it was not, can you not, have you ever smelled ultraviolet man? I can't remember. I, I, I'm going to say no. It was pretty different from anything that, like it but was different. Was put it like that. Shit, there was like a whole, you know, two decades where it just shit everything coming out of there. Black excess, all those excess, those overly sweet strawberry notes. Then came the overly sweet one million, and now the overly yeah, sweet. Oh, like this, it's just like two decades of shit perfumes. I don't remember it's ultraviolet been... man though. Ultraviolet this. man, try see if you can get a see if you can get a vintage of ultraviolet man. It was it, fucking it you, you'd so probably hate it. it. It was very synthetic. I just wanted to be noticed. So you wanted some violet. See, I I remember being single at one time and I had a date coming up and I wanted a new fragrance. And I went to the the counter here at the Hudson's Bay. And I remember specifically, I knew nothing about perfume. Like I had a lot of great classics. I think it was actually one of the first times I was buying fragrance for myself. My mom used to buy me a lot of um, my perfumes, but I remember specifically saying, I want something fresh, light, and that doesn't smell perfumey. And I didn't have the descriptors for perfumery, but the things I had in mind were like Sh Shalimar, which are powdery powdery orientals at the time that was what i wanted to stay away from and i ended up going home with dolce gabbana the one oh dear yeah mm. when was that that was in about 2009 
Fur. Fur. Yeah. Fur. I've never liked the one. I bought the Eau de Parfum and I tried to like it. I really tried hard to like it. The EDT is the only one I ever owned. That was the original. Yeah. It was like, lasted for about an hour. Grapefruit and tobacco. Yeah. But it worked great in the humidity, I remember. Yeah. I don't like grapefruit as a, as a fragrance note. I've never been a fan of grapefruit as a, as a fragrance note, as a fragrance bro, as a oh, fragrance no. note. <laughs> fragrance. Overall, citrus is useless and boring. Who cares about citrus? It's like citrus, is, it fades really quick and it's just meh. It's it's got to be it's got to be done it's got to be done well. I find myself I've bought by accident a few um, a few lemon fragrances recently, right? Um, and I don't like I don't like lemon because the Chanel. I remember I wanted to buy I really wanted to buy Paul Monsieur ADT, and I went to the I went to the counter and I got Paul Monsieur ADP on one hand and Paul Monsieur ADT on the other hand. And the EDT turned so bad on my skin. Honestly, it's it smelled like it smelled like lemon and and like lemon and piss. And I was just like, this is not this is not what fragrance is supposed to smell. It turned like sour, but like not in a good way, in a bad way. Um, so I had to I had to lay off the old uh, the old poor monsieur. I'm afraid. The ADT anyway, and it, it soured as on lemon as as, as it's very important. It. Yeah, but the fragrances I tend to like don't hold a lot of citrus. I mean, Poor Monsieur is the the rare option. So the top notes of a fragrance I don't really care for. It's usually usually the same shit over and over again. Yeah, I know what you mean. What do you do? You think cloves a top note? It's it's more leans towards the top than the base, but it's it could be you know a heart note as well. Yeah, I found myself quite enjoying clove. I love clove as a note too. I think Frederick Moll uses it in the majority of his perfumes as well. Yeah, you think because the most just a like a huge a huge it's amount, spicy, but it adds a woody uh, complexity to it as well. Yeah, and it's deep. It's got this. It's got a freshness about it for me, clove. Really? It's got like a like oh. not a freshness. Fresh, fresh is probably the wrong word. Like a medicinal, like a clean yeah. antiseptic vibe yes. about it. That's probably the Absolutely best. Absolutely can. I agree. What I, I love, I find that is, is it adds some kind of challenging uh, concept to the perfume. Yes, it's good for contrast as well, because um, it contrasts with almost everything. Because it yeah. smells very unique. I love Jiki. Ducks are good. I love Jiki. Yiki. Somebody says ducks are good for kicking. Mark Arg, you can fuck off. I hope I hope they're talking about you. I hope they're fucking not talking about me. I'll kick back. Abuse. Sorry, Hannibal abuse. That's right. Clove. Don't be a... You know what I like together is clove and ginger because they add a really nice contrast. And then you get kind of that ginger, you get that gingerbread uh, cookie uh, vibe from it. Not a big fan of ginger. Really? Um, I love ginger in my cooking. Not a, big, not a big fan of ginger. I like I like I like five o'clock au gingembre. Um but baptême de fur has got a gingerbread note about it. Baptême de Fur is a crazy perfume anyway. It's absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, I had a but, bit on my hand yesterday for the first time. But Baptême de Fur? Yeah. Fur. And it, um, it's, it's, oh, oh, fucking, it's just, it's mad, isn't it? It's proper mad as a perfume. It's got like castorium, but like also like metal. Um, but oh, it's yeah. also got like, Dumb. Um, it's it's. Sorry, I didn't know. I don't know. I thought you said something. I said, "What's up to the dog man?" No, oh, dog man. Hello, John. How you doing? Um, dog man likes clove or cumin. Might be a little bit too challenging for dog man. Not sure. He's got a, he's got a, he's got a strong nose as the dog man. <laughs> 
as, as most as most dogs as most dogs do. Right. Um, have you ever tried to put like a, have you ever tried to put like a fragrance like underneath a dog's nose? I don't think they would like it very much. No, not not the fucking hate it. Very so like, they're just like stronger than ours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but we are going um, going back to clove. Like I love. All three, you know, clove, cumin, and cardamom. I think in that order too, because they all add uh, a really nice, a nice depth to the perfumes. I think they're the three favorite spices of Jean Claude Elena as well: clove, cumin, cardamom. I don't like cumin. I mean, it really, it really, it really, really, really um, doesn't agree with my skin. It really doesn't agree with my skin. Is it because um, it comes off BO-ish? Oh, it stinks of armpit. Bad yeah. armpit. I can see um, it. And and I've oh, I like I try to get away like declaration is declaration got it. Yeah. I was just gonna ask you what are the two guiltiest uh, culprits of that BO cumin for you? Because uh, you Bois, Mysteri Bois Mysterio. Yes. And, and I would say are are fantastic. Probably, I, just, I like them as perfumes. I like them on other people. I've got a mate, and um, I sprayed some on him, and I was like, "Oh, that's really nice." I sprayed some on me, and it just smelled like just bad, bad armpit, just mm -hmm. like just 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 the armpit of someone who'd done something terrible. Yeah, you know, what I mean, like like some like 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 if some murderer was running away from the police, that's what like his armpit would smell like. Um. A humans just humans just absolute rot on me. I love it. One of my favorite notes. Uh, clove and cumin, it's kind of a toss up. And then I would say cardamom is below those both. I'm not a huge cardamom fan. You know which not a huge um, fan. which which clove I really liked was uh Serge Luton's. And I don't own a bottle. It was uh Serge Noir. No, I don't like Serge Noir. Or am I thinking of Datura Noir? Datura Noir is a I'm floral. Like, it's a white floral. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't like. Yeah, I don't like Datura Noir. I'm not sure I've smelled. Um, I'm not sure I've smelled Serge Noir, or if I have, I can't remember it. Um, yeah, it's surprise you to learn I haven't smelled every single, every single Serge Luton. Wow. Bracken man. Are you familiar with Bracken? No. That's a fougere, isn't it? Lavender and clove. 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 I need more clove in my life. Declaration done swear. Someone said cumin is toned down in the essence. Phosphor. <sighs> I love sweaty armpits and perfume. Love it. How strange <laughs> is that? You know, my son once said to me, he's like, Dad, you're the only guy I know that wears perfume to smell worse. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> That's a I great would, observation. They don't understand the whole concept. You know, the whole art behind it. They're like, why? It's a fantastic why observation. That? It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. They don't get it. I'd be like, smell this. Or they'll ask me which <laughs> one I smell, and I'll, I'll, I'll point out leather oud. And, you know, they're always surprised, no matter how many times they take a whiff. It's always like that recoiling action. Whoa. Yeah, it's definitely an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. um, you can see how people acquire the taste over time. And how what's naturally naturally pleasing based on the fact that you like it when you're young and what becomes pleasing as you get older. And it's just it's just I wonder what pulls you in that direction. Do you know? Uh, like, yeah. I think it's, uh, a, it's like a repetition of the same old and wanting something more. You know, we're humans, yeah. we're emotional. We have that attachment to emotion. We want to be moved. You know, 
there's excitement in in the emotion. We, we're 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 stimulated by that. It almost becomes an addiction. If we're not yeah. if we're not excited, it's just boring. Yeah, if you can get that's what I was that's what I was asking before about like when was the last time you um you were moved by a perfume because like one of my big fears is, is that one day I'll wake up and be bored by perfume and just not bother. Wow. Yeah. It's very possible. You could find something yeah. in your life that, that enriches you or fulfills you. And uh, you could very easily, you know, forget about perfume. It's a stimulation yeah. for us right now. It's a distraction. Yes. You could feel that. Yes, it is. It's, with anything you could, you could, you could, let's say meet a, a, a man or a woman, whatever your preference is and completely fall in love with them and, you know, spend your whole waking hours with this person. And you would say it would fill you to the point of you saying, you know what? I haven't worn any perfume. I haven't been home in a week. I haven't worn any perfume and I don't miss it. Well, because you have yeah. some filling that, void that emptiness and yeah. that's what perfume is for us it's 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 not just that but you you know you need something in your life it's that this is what creates that happiness for us you can't search happiness you're never going to find it but we need to search for happiness within things i mean ultimately it, need, it needs to come from us from within but it's almost impossible to live your life daily and and just be enlightened you know you'd be a monk up in tibet so we search for it in other things yeah and for us it happens to be perfume for other people it's you know whatever it could be wine coming home from work and drinking a bottle of wine yeah that's that more about them, repression yeah that makes them forget about you know the shitty aspects that they don't want to deal with in their life for me, it's been perfume because it's almost felt like kind of harmless. I'm not harming anybody. You know, the worst aspect is you're, you're blowing a, a ton of money that you could be using. And, you know, there's always smarter ways in using your money. But um, yeah, but even if even if you were using money in a different way, there'd always be a smarter way than that. Um, I would rather true. be happy. Um, and it's brought as it's it's one of the good one of the best things about perfume is as well as it brings a great sense of community. Right. Um, I mean, there's been pretty much consistently in here about a hundred, hundred and ten people since we started. Which thank you, um, everybody, by the way. Uh, I know. Yes, thank you for listening to what we're on as much as I do. And like th like this fucker, by the way, smash that like button. How many likes have you got? Fifty three. That's not that's not many. It's not bad. I'm sure it's the diehards. Yeah, the diehards should do. That said, I don't like perfume reviews, so what can I can't really complain. It's more for your, it's more for your sake than mine. It's good for the algorithm, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think it gets shared around on YouTube if there's more interaction. Yeah. Which then ultimately makes it a better experience for everybody here, especially you know for us and and in the chat. Yeah, it's a nice it's nice to have chat experience. There's definitely something elementally human about wanting a sense of community, like feeling part of something bigger than yourself. Yeah, especially something uh, that you're interested in and you have a passion about, uh, something that soaks up a lot of your time. Yeah. You know, it's, it's definitely a, an obsession of mine. I, I won't even bother to deny it. Yeah, I would say as well. I would say it's it's like people get bored of hearing us talking about it, um, apart from everybody here. Um, but well, it's, everybody's it's, here on their own merit. Nobody's, you know, nobody's locked up or forced to be here. And it's no, all, you know, it's, it's all familiar <laughs> faces. You know, so it's like yes. like-minded people always find each other wherever you go. Yes. It's, it's that community of people, you know, they know what they like and they find other people uh, within that yeah. same family. No, I would totally agree. I would totally agree. There's, it's nice to have a, it's nice to have something that you've got in common with other people that makes you feel part of something. 
um, makes you feel validated, and it's it's a it's a it's a it's a legitimate it's a legitimate pursuit that um, people shouldn't be people don't need to be made to feel bad about the fact that like like you know like there's like some people who wouldn't have anything else like there might be a loser in their real life um but when they come on when they come on um the internet and they come on youtube or they come on or they come on like instagram or facebook and they talk about perfume people take them fucking seriously people, right people listen to them and they get validation back from that you know yeah so so um, perfume is their life meaning yeah and if it wasn't perfume, it might be something else. But the fact is, it's perfume, right? So, which is pretty uncanny for a, you know 112 uh, men sitting in the chat room talking about perfume. That's plenty. Right, of perfume. We're talking about perfume. It's perfume. Yeah. We're talking about practice. Yeah. yeah. Practice. I, it's just practice. Yeah, it's good practice. It's it's because it's not. It's not it's 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 not harming anyone else. It's it's you know what it is though? for me, it was a major distraction where where you know it was always in the back of the, my mind and, and even though I should have been in the you know present in the moment with the people around me and in conversation and enjoying myself. I always, I, I found I couldn't enjoy myself because I always had thoughts of perfume lingering in the back of my mind, you know, so I was never yeah. free from it. I always had this, almost like this mental attachment to perfume where it had this grip on me. I, I couldn't let go where it's like yeah. I couldn't enjoy anything else. That was your particular circumstances though. I'm like, I'm like, I'm a single ma I'm a single like man. Right. Um, yeah. I don't have I don't yeah. have like responsibilities to anyone apart from myself. Um and this is how I choose to spend like that single time. Maybe if I do like you said, maybe if you do find like a lass, maybe if I do find like a woman and I want to settle down, maybe I'll but I I don't I can't ever and I don't want to ever see myself without perfume. I love it and it's my hobby and I've had worse habits. Mm. Um, and I'm glad that this is now something that I don't have, I don't like, I don't have to feel guilty about enjoying. Um, I think the guilt, I think a lot of people do feel guilty for enjoying certain things in their life. Um, or feeling bad for about certain things in their life, um, that, that give them relief. And this is a, this is like good clean fun. I don't know if you have that saying over in over in Canada or North America, but like like where you have like it's the most fun you can have with your clothes on. Um, right. It's like it's it's good it's good clean fun. This is like we're not we're not like it's we're not nobody's committing any crimes, nobody's hurting anybody else, right? As long as nobody's well, getting yeah, we're hurt. We're not nobody's... doing it to each other, but what are you doing to yourself? Um, what are you taking away? What are what is the trade-off for perfume, you know? What is the trade-off for this fun? There's a price for everything. I like, mean, let, this is the... Say, for instance, well, what, what else would it be? What else would it be if it wasn't perfume, then? I mean, is this well, not is this not it could a legitimate food, pursuit? You know? it, it could be food. You, you want to be distracted. You come home from work and you're feeling press, pressure or stress. You might not have that community of uh, perfume friends to turn with, but I guarantee you if it's not that, it will be something else to fill that emptiness. And it could be, it could be jerking off to porno. It could be eating a fucking cherry cheesecake, an entire cheesecake to yourself. It will be something to fill that emptiness. What if it's not though? And you just feel empty. Is collecting perfume, is, is collecting perfume not better than that? I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm saying if this isn't what you're doing, it will turn into something else. You can quit perfume. You can quit buying perfume and quit the perfume um, friends that you have. But all that attention will turn to something else regardless of what it, what it is. We constantly, we're looking to fulfill ourselves. Yeah. 
to distract ourselves from our own selves. Well, no, because some people don't. Some people, some people are happy. Some people are happy and collect perfume. Um, We're all happy collecting perfume. No, but what I'm saying is some people don't have those issues and yet they still collect perfume. Some people don't have those issues and still eat fucking huge amounts of food or still have things that... So they have more problems problems than just the one. No, so they don't have any problems, but they like to collect perfume. I, I don't think anybody can go through life without having any problems. I don't think anybody can, but what I'm saying is is that there doesn't necessarily need to be a problem. Uh, like, like problem doesn't necessarily have to be like motivation to do something or not do something. It's like, it's like, like problems aren't the root of all, aren't the root of all motivation. Well, I tell you this, if you were happy and enlightened and you filled your own self, I guarantee you, you wouldn't be buying five backup bottles of whatever it is that you're buying. I'm not speaking necessarily you, but most people. No, I know. I know, but that's people don't that's need one. Anything. That's one way of that's happy. one way of looking at life. They don't need that's anything, one. you know. The the Who? very essential. They're happy being alone and with themselves. Not necessarily that they need to be alone. Who are people that are happy? But who's happy? You got to find them. I don't think there is anyone. I think everybody's doing. I think, like, I think everybody's doing what they can to just get by without causing as much damage as they possibly can. Hi, Eva. Evil. Oh, hi. For me, it was always one more. I only need one more. And that was my. Yeah. It was my excuse, one more, just one more. And after that, you know, it'll be it, one more. Yeah. One more never ends, though, does it? Right, yeah, exactly. Cause, one cause more it's not, it's not a defined limit. It's not a defined limit. It's like infinity. It's like you, it doesn't matter how big infinity is, you can always add one to it. Absolutely. There's no such thing. So it's it's one more isn't, isn't, a, isn't a finite number. Um. Which is it's, it's it makes everything hard to control. Um, it's funny the excuses we give ourselves, isn't it? Happiness is it's not easy to grasp, and I don't think a lot of people really understand what true happiness means. And, and true happiness it it comes from inside. It can only come from inside because I I can't take this sample or this perfume and, 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 you know, give it to myself. I can wear it. It's temporary. The happiness it brings me, it's temporary. So once that perfume is gone, that happiness is gone. That's not real. It's like a substitute. But did it actually make you happy in the first place? Maybe, maybe not. That's, you know, that. Yeah, I know. I do know that. I'm just trying to challenge you. Did the perfume where it ends? What's that? I'm just trying to challenge you and see where it ends. Like, where where does it go? There's the problem with stuff like because what you're saying sounds a lot like Buddhism. Um, mm-hmm. and I, I the don't problem know with Buddhism, Buddhism, I have never studied Buddhism. No, I'm I've, I'm not. The, the problem with Buddhism is is it just provides enough life for you to appreciate being dead. Um, <laughs> that that's that's the pro- it's the problem with Buddhism. Do you know what I mean? It's like strip everything away from your life so you can enjoy when you're dead. Um, and that you deserve to have some, not guilty pleasures, but you deserve to have some pleasure out of life. I mean, fucking hell. And not every pleasure is a distraction from problems in life. Well, it's that's just, right. But if it's recurring every single day repetitively, that's an addiction. That, yes. Not- yes. Yes. There has to be a healthy, there has to be a healthy, I totally agree with you. What I'm saying is, is that, that it doesn't, it, like, not everything um, is that way. If you can, I remember you did a video with Maria when you first talked about your fragrance addiction. And she said, when you went to the therapist, the therapist told you, you have to get rid of all your bottles. Right. Um, that's bollocks. Um, and she that. said that as, and, yeah, and she said that and Maria said that as well. 
and mm. she was right. And I remember, I remember sitting screaming. Well, I didn't scream at the at the at the, uh, the screen, mm. but I remember sitting thinking to myself, that therapist can go and fuck off, um, because it's not. It's about getting a decent balance. You don't have to strip away everything. Um, you, you just need to get it into a balance. You know, I've been doing a lot of self-reflection in the last two years, and I've learned a lot about who I am. I'm not saying that I'm happy in, in the sense that we're discussing it or I'm enlightened or any of that, but I, I got a clearer picture of, you know, who I truly am. And, you know, it shows because this year I've purchased in total five perfumes this yeah. time last year, I was at 29. So I had purchased 29 perfumes at the same time last year. And that was all about filling emptiness, uh, filling yeah. this this place of unhappiness, filling yeah. a place of uh, insecurity, a, a place of feeling unworthy, filling a place of feeling unloved, uh, a, a place of unknown. Yeah, it sounds like you've struck more of a balance because it's not like you've it's not like you haven't bought any you haven't bought any perfumes. Right, it's like you've bought less and you've you've found a, you've found a place you've found an amount of or you've found a buying habit of that's that you're much happier with. Right. So before you know, at any time a feeling would come up, I would stuff it and I'd be like, I'm going to mask that emotion, this this negative feeling, and I'm going to. I want to make myself feel better, but it would always be from external source. So I would go buy yeah. a, a perfume or an extra large pepperoni pizza because it would make me feel better. Or, yeah, you know, whatever the vice be, go get a drink. I don't yeah. drink, but I'm using that as an example. Um, food was always a comfort for me, too. Food always made me feel better. Yeah. Food makes everybody feel better. You're hardwired. You're hardwired to feel that. Some people love love to vacation. That's that's their their vice. Some people love to eat out or or buy new clothing. You know, shopping is a huge one as well. Online yes. shopping is an addiction. Gambling is a huge uh, gambling scandal. I fucking hate gambling. Yeah, you know, gambling fills a lot of people, and it's the stimulation that we're looking for. No, I totally no, no. I get what you're saying. What I'm saying is, is that none of those things, in and of themselves, is bad. But doing it over and over and over again to the point where it's unhealthy is bad. What what I would say about the perfume is, in regards to you and me, and other people, is that even if I was, even if I what you say is enlightened, or even if I was think I would still. I would always want to seek a little bit of pleasure. I would always want a little bit of escapism. I just wouldn't want it to overtake my entire life. Um, and I would, I would rather have balance than because I see, I see like being free from that. I see that as being quite an extremist position. Um, I think that's quite like to say that, like if I was, if you were to say to me, you can be free of your desire to buy perfume ever again. I would say, well, no, because I like me perfume, um, but, but if you could say it was you could you could no, but if you could say it was you could be free of wanting to buy a perfume every hour of every day, then I would say yes. For me, that the middle, the middle, the middle way, the middle ground is better than being all one way or all the other way, um, and it's something I've that's something that I've always struggled with in my life to try and find like a balance between the two. You know, that's the whole thing is finding a balance. Yes, yes, totally. You're totally right. I totally agree with you. I would much rather find a balance. You seem to have found a balance as far as your perfume yeah, I, I, is concerned. I love my perfume hobby. It it, it completely fills me, and for me, it's completely harmless. Um, you know, I I can't get in trouble with my my perfumes, except for the yeah. amount. Of Time I spend, you know, that's the only thing that I'm losing. It's not just money, but it's it's my time, which you can never get back. Money, you can always recreate. I can go to work tomorrow and make more money, or you know, I can work extra hours and make more money. 
but time you can't get this time back so you got to be really careful no. with what you want to give yes, your time here's a question for you changing topic a little bit have you got your perfume insured mine me yeah yeah i haven't yet but i will yeah of course i think you should do it <laughs> shop <laughs> um as i'm thinking of doing mine i've just sorted my house insurance out and oh, i didn't mention it too. perfume bottle yes i do have my perfume. yeah, yeah i do all right sounder that's what i meant not yet not the perfume you're releasing no um as um no I was just asking about your perfume collection because I haven't got mine. I haven't got mine insured, um, but I want to. But what that would what that would include would be putting a putting a, um, a value on it, and I'm not sure I want to count it. All. <laughs> I want to count it all up because I'm scared what the answer is going to be. Um, I need to come to terms with that. That's that's I, I, I thought to myself the other day. I thought that's a fucking problem. Um, if I don't want to count it all up and see how much, but the thing is, as well as that, you can always flip them, turn them over if you needed to release like the money from them and stuff. Especially some of mine, I've got some rare, got some rare stuff. Um, yeah, stuff you can never get back. Yeah, that's why I want to keep them. That's like that's part of the thing. Um, that's part of the thing of having it. You know, it's like I would rather have like. I would rather have some like rare stuff. I like I've always liked collecting like rare stuff. Um I don't know whether it's to like whether it's to like make you feel um um special. Whether it's to make you feel like, yeah, to make you feel special or like unique. Like look at me, I have like, this nobody else has one. Exactly. That's like something and that's like something because there's definitely lessons you can learn from the way that you enjoy your it's like what they say about kids, isn't it? They always say if you want to learn about your kids, don't see how the don't see how the work, don't look at the schoolwork, look at how they play with other kids. Um, and then you'll find out more about your kids. Don't look at the school, don't look at that um the textbooks, look at how they play with other kids. Um, and that's that's well, something just, you can do. To their words, their words tell you everything, their values, their morals, their stories. You know, yeah, and it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing as an adult as well. How Absolutely. you relax and how you how you play as an adult um, will show you, will tell you more about than anything that your job would tell you. Yeah, just them telling you a story about another person tells you exactly who they are. Yeah, exactly. How they react in relation to other people. Great, great shit's got deep. Way. Great chat. Yeah. Uh, great chat, by the way. Yeah. I've enjoyed this chat. We've still maintained around a hundred people as well. And we're at seventy two likes. Wow. Really good. That's seventy percent. Yeah, it's really good. Stuff. A good follow through. Yes. You were saying three people unsubscribed after the last stream. Yeah, yeah. You were just asking me about the analytics and I just happened to run. I was like, oh, look at this. Right. Oh, uh, I can't remember what we were talking about though. The last stream was. It was. Do you know what I mean? Oh, right. Well, what were the topics? <laughs> That's. I don't know what the topics were. We just went on and started talking bullshit. Like, like we... a, a random stream. Yeah. That's right. The people seem to enjoy a random stream. People enjoy. It. Have I ever told you this as well? Right, your streams. You've only got like eight. You've only got like eight thousand subscribers, but you get a hundred people in the chat. There are people with like five and six times many as many subscribers as you've got. Only get half as many, not even half as many, like a third. I have no explanation um, for it. That's because people know you because because everything about your channel is genuine. People might not like it, but it's genuine. I think it's a little bit of everything, really. Maybe maybe just their tastes align with mine. How about that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, my tastes don't align with yours, but I'll still subscribe. Yeah. I mean, that's not to say everybody else's subs aren't real. Somebody says my sub. Yeah, my subs are all real, but. Yeah. I don't As know. We're not talking about I, Max I 40. Yeah, let's be honest. For it. Uh, I'm grateful for it. I love it, you know. 
that people come out and they enjoy it and they stick around too. We've been at a hundred pretty consistently. Um, the comments have been flow. I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping up with the conversation and I'm trying to highlight, you know, comments that stick out. Klaus, Klaus Muller would like to know if I like Aramis fragrances. Yes, I do. I have got a vintage, but I've put it away, Klaus. Um, I've got a vintage bottle of uh, Aramis for men, and it's glorious. It's I love really you, good. I've got this. You love who? What? I love cuddles. I, I love Rich as well. Cuddles will love you as well, son. Don't There's worry. something about cuddles that I find endearing. I don't know what it is. I, I think I he's find no, it very genuine as well. Yeah, he's got no filter. It just comes out, doesn't it? Um, so he's <laughs> yeah. not a, he's, 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 He's a lot of things as Neil, but he's not a liar. Right. Do you know, you know he's he a genuine, not, like you say, he's genuine. He's a lot he of things, Neil, but he's not a liar. Time, but he's not, he's, I'm certain that he's not lying about it. Yeah, exactly. And there are so many people who are willing to lie to you that um, Eugene just lost 10 subs. <laughs> I'm okay with it, Neil, as long as you're with me for life. Just That's right. Me, you'll never leave me. I need oh. you. Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was weird. I got weird in a hurry. Uh, is what the same type of oak moss that I know? Honestly, the oak moss I know. You want nothing to do with the oak moss I know. <laughs> that is frightening. <laughs> oh dear. I think for the most part, Fragcom is great. And whenever there's a problem, it's usually a clash of the ego. And yeah, ego it's is a like the ideas of how important or how relevant you think you are. Right? We all got different yeah. ideas of who, who we think we are, which most of the times aren't necessarily true. Yeah, it's a lot to do with like men as well. Men are a certain disposition. That's like, as far as like, like because the, this has been talked about many times. I remember Smurfy Girlie about a year ago talking about how um, the fragrance community is like mostly men, and it is mostly men. It's like a ratio of like fucking ten to one or something ridiculous like that. Yeah, um, isn't that so awkward? I mean, it's strange to think about. Because it almost yeah, it is like a, a, a girl's hobby, you know, not to stereotype yeah. otherwise, but it kind of goes with like a feminine thing. hobby, right? Macho men, like I, I think it almost feels like they like to smell good more than they like to look good or feel good. Yeah, nobody, I'll tell you what it is, right? There is no worse thing than somebody telling you that you smell bad. Oh, fuck. and I think a lot of men, I, I, yeah, it's it's awful um it's, 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 it's we all have that fear yeah like you can you can look bad and the thing is is that you can ch like it, it's just something particularly awful about somebody saying to you you stink um i wouldn't know of course because i always smell brilliant but you know they're having a, a light-hearted go at cuddles bless them I, I think part of the magic with perfume, though, is it literally takes a second and you're you're done. You're re you're you're ready to go. You're perfumed and you can go about your stuff, right? Yeah. If you needed to get it's, dressed it's, or you're into fashion, it, it it could take you some time to put on yeah. your outfit. Or if you're into makeup, it takes time to put that face on. But perfume is just it's instant, and that's exactly yeah. what today's society is. They want that instant gratification. They want that instant fulfillment. It's that stimulant. Yes. You know, the second you smell a perfume, I remember from a being a small kid and and smelling perfume, that instant blast. It was it was something special. It was just like you want to relive that moment over and over again, but you can't. Yeah, well, the thing is, with fleeting, it's that very small moment in time that you can't get back because if you spray the perfume again, you don't get that same result. Yeah, it's it's the thing is with their uh, smell as well is it's it's the closest one it, it the closest one to the memories, so it's like the most stimulating one. It's it's the one that like brings back all these feelings, and it will give you feelings, and it's the easiest one to create memories with, and like and like get that stimulation quickest. It's very much like a drug. What 
What are you looking at? Sorry, my kid texted me. Oh, hello. Um, I saw um, perfume is a niche within the beauty industry, and in this industry, women tend to be more makeup, creams, fashion, and perfume is just the cherry on the top. Yeah, it's right. a very, it's a very particular. I saw skunk hours as well. Skunk hours. Where are you? Men seem to get obsessed over the things more than women. Mate, I don't know how many women you know, um, but. So only that's only partially true. Um, lots of men as a collectors in general. Yes, I would agree with that. There's more men are much more collectors in general. But if you think that women don't get obsessive more, seem to get more. So he's seem to get more. Yeah, women women can get obsessive. Don't worry about that, mate. Um, it depends. It's, it's women don't make it as obvious as men. Uh, Jim. Vision is three years of my mortgage payments on those shelves behind him. <laughs> I mean, things in as in actual objects. Yes, I would agree. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point, Skunk Hours. I haven't seen Skunk Hours here before. He's a new one on us. It could be a, a new name. Somebody just reformulated their name. I haven't seen um, <laughs> the backup bottle boss. It, you know, I, I don't know what name he's coming He out. is... Virgin the fuck out. That is his new name. Um, I'll I tell remember you who I haven't seen for a while. Uh, um, Aldehydes. Aldehydes. Remember Aldehydes? You do. He always, he always wrote in capital letters. Ah, the infidel crusher. Ah, yes, he's changed his new. He's changed his name. Oh, okay. The infidel crusher. He's been here um, pretty much. Carl says, my daughter has suddenly become more interested in perfume. Oh, dear. Went since becoming 18. Maybe it's my influence. You want to watch that? Uh, what about beef curtains? Yes. Scented moments. I miss beef curtains. Something shocking. Um, I dropped a video six months ago, and he said hello, and then I've never heard of him since. Um, and I hadn't heard from him for a while before oh. then as well. Yeah, I haven't heard of him. He used to comment often on my videos. Yeah, I know. It's a terrible thing that he's gone. Like, I wish he would come back. The proper I'm good sure he's around. Maybe he is, yeah. Um, I think Who's something raccoon happened. Eyes? What happened Sorry? to Raccoon Eyes? Who's Raccoon Eyes? I don't know. Never heard of Raccoon Eyes. This, this is a part of something that I dealt with extensively. I would I would get home with new fragrances, haven't even been unwrapped, and I'm already looking for the next hit. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is a common one. Well, it's common for me. That's happened as well for me. Neil, if I come to Miami, can I stay with you? In the same bed. Yeah. I want to feel those <laughs> talons of yours. Has he got long toenails? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm kind of insinuating <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear me. What time is it where you are? So we just had a, a time change last week, and it's 8.50. Oh, no. And yeah, it's it like should be 7.50. Yeah. We went up one hour ahead. It's 8.50. Oh, dear. Frederick Moll's having his... um. His master class tomorrow. Oh, God. Go on. Is that the one? Is that the one where the woman said that he was a, a master perfumer, but he really wasn't? Yeah. I think that's tomorrow at five o'clock. I want to watch that. You know who the worst cult you know who the worst culprit is for saying they're a master perfumer when they aren't, apart from Creed. I know. We don't need to Dove. Oh, I didn't sorry. hear that. <laughs> I know you're planning on buying some of his stuff, aren't you? Like, like we talked about this last week sometime. I, I do enjoy his work tremendously, but at the same time, I always get this, this feeling like I can get this very similar scent for one-tenth of the price. I hear there's going to be a new mall coming very soon. Uh, maybe even this spring. Frederick's really 
he's really quiet about that. He, he he says he's superstitious, so he like doesn't like to give his secrets away. I'm not sure what he's afraid of. But I heard it's going to be green. That's a comment that somebody left in one of my videos. Green? Yeah. Interesting. I wonder. I mean, I think French love is green. French yeah, it is. love is a golden and blonde. French oh, lover is a girl. green. Number. What's your favorite green? I love green perfumes. I wish yeah, they would come back, but I think as far as designer fragrances, green perfumes are dead. I'm talking like natural connecting you to earth green. I'm not talking artificial green like the new Hermes. Like real green that reminds you of being outdoors. Um, I would say... L'Ombre Dons Low by Diptyque. Oh, that smells like L'Ombre Dons Low. We're going back 30, 40 years. L'Ombre Dons Low smells like, um, I'll tell you what that smells like. It smells like you've, you're walking through a forest and then you just reach up and grab a branch from a tree and just snap it in half and you smell, do you know that like goo? Do you know the water goo that runs through a tree, like tree branches? Yeah, and it's just like you smell that, and it's like green water. That's what that's what Lombra Don's low smells like. Um, also Jules, uh, the nineteen eighties release of Jules. Mm. Uh, that smell. That's that's incredibly green. Um, what else is green? Vetiver's a green fragrance. So most vetivers. Yeah. yeah. Um, Diptyques. Diptyques usually good for a for a. Um, I love 19 for a green perfume fragrance. 19. Yeah, number 19. French love. There it is. Is Philosico a green fragrance? I would say, yeah, it's a green fig, green juice. Yeah, fig. It's a, yeah, it's um, a natural smelling fig. Santal 33 is a green fragrance. Don't like the lava. Ah, French love is very green, very musty. It's got a, definitely like galbanum's a green note. Yeah, and it can be challenging at times, especially if it's bitter. Yeah, I get galbanum in the rose and Frederick Mall rose and queer in the opening. Does anyone yes, else? Abs absolutely. Yeah, I get that. Absolutely. Um, I remember in our video, but, Crystal was like, "What would you like?" I was so pissed off that it wasn't what I would attach to. Um, what a rose and queer should smell like. And he was like, if you could name this perfume, what would you have named it? And I said, Galbanium geranium. That's what it smelled like. To <laughs> me. Galbanum and geranium. There's no rose. Yeah. Well, I couldn't perceive any leather at that time. Oh, oh I get all I get from it's like leather and rose. That's all I get. Like, a, like, a, like, like, like somebody's like roan, rolled around in a galbanum field wearing a leather jacket, but like, but like not a very good leather jacket, just a just a shitty cheap leather jacket. Oh, sitting down. Oh, um, macaque is very green. Zoologist macaque. Um, I am not smelling yet, cock. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be quite <laughs> the joke. Yeah. Um. What was I gonna say? Um, green, great. Most of the green, green aspects. Um, the uh, yoy, what's it called? The Angelique Sula Pluie is a nice green, earthy, rooty perfume. It it reminds green me Irish. Of, yeah, green, green Irish, Irish tweed. Is it more earthy or I? I can't remember. It's been so long since I've worn green Irish tweed. Is it a natural? Green? It. I don't know that it's a natural. It's got natural smelling aspects, but I don't necessarily know that it's like pure natural because it's got that amber gray in it, which gives it like a an unnatural. Like amber gray is not something you would find in the middle of a field. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not like it's not like an entirely green. It's not an entirely green oh, Victor, perfume. Victor's here. I just noticed now. What's up, Victor? We got to get Victor on here sometime. That's right. Hello. 
I've asked him several oh, yeah. times. He's always kind of like, ah, he's not into, you know, videos or, but maybe if we convince him in the comments, he might accept. Hello. Yeah. Monsieur has an element of greenness to it. A lot of, a lot of patchoulis have, uh, like a green, um, a green vibe. I'll tell you what else. I've got Vert de Anson by Tom Ford. That's quite green. Um, Vert de Bois, Vert Anson. Um, <laughs> Look at this. Nothing natural smelling about Jet. I remember a lot of florals being in Jet. In Jet? Get. Green Irish tweed. <laughs> Get, get, the amber green and it's quite quite um nice. It's just a nice, it's just a nice perfume green Irish tweed. Um, it just smells good. Um, Bois de Portugal. That's got like a it's got like a green vibe, but I, I'm not sure. I'm not just thinking that because it's got a green like a green. I think label. it's more brown. I have a feeling. Oh no. Not, not for me. Um, it's more, it's more, it's more like a, like a, like a, I get like a, like a yellowy, a yellowy green from it. I'm trying I to the think. Way, I love it. Sorry. Sycamore is green. Yeah. I guess most things going around vetiver would be. Yes. How about lavender? Do you like green lavender? Like an, a really earthy lavender? Yes. Or do you find um, all lavender uh, green? No, I don't find all lavender green, but I think... No, let us put that another way. I think you can get lavender. Some are more green than others. Um, most florals have a green aspect, in my opinion. Mm. Um, because May or may not. I, th I, think, I think most florals do because of the stem. Um, I think it depends which part of the flower that you would pick a floral, like the floral from. Um you know how they sometimes say, like, if you if you get like a certain note, they'll say, um, it's got, you know, like, you know, like it says, um, it's got like the bark, like fig, fig tree stem, or like, or like, do you know, like it's got like this, this fragrance has got like the stem of, or like a fig tree, a fig tree bark, so it's got like a woody fig. Um, I, f I find that with most with most florals to me I get I get a green aspect from almost all florals because because of the very nature of what they are I think they can and, and but don't have to be green there's lots of I don't know what about white florals do you find white florals there might be an aspect of green in them but what about orange blossom what about Honestly, violet right. or carnation or iris? Like iris, you can Honestly. go both a green iris or a white iris. Honestly, right. I cannot deal with white florals. I really, really don't like white florals. Like tuberose, jasmine especially. Jasmine's the enemy. Um, like I really can't, I really can't hack them. Um... Why do you think that is? They make us feel sick. They make us feel physically sick. I'm not they, kidding. They turn your stomach? Yeah. I, I don't yeah. think you're experienced enough. Oh, give over. Don't I be think a rascal. You got to keep going. I think you should just overdose the white florals for the next two weeks and yeah. see what I, I bet you would turn into the white floral monster. Do you like carnal flower? Mm, I think, I think no, Frederick I can't Mon remember it. He nicknamed that the beautiful monster. I can't remember it. I think Jasmine can be beautiful. Uh, beautifully indolic. 
I don't like Jasmine at all. Just <laughs> just stinks of, just stinks of stale piss and just literally turns me stomach. I know what you mean, but that's that's the thing that I like from it. Yeah. You're an, you you're an evil man. You want to come live and show us what you what you just got? Who is it? Who you talking to? Neil. Neil's getting boners. Neil's getting boners. Neroli and tuberose are quite hard to appreciate. I think Neroli is quite simple. Neroli, orange blossom, bergamot. I can understand tuberose and jasmine. I can't do. I mean, what about bergamot's Ylang? nice. What about Elang? No. Don't I like, like bergamot. It. It's so simple. There's nothing to not like. Yeah. I like, um, what else do I like? I like, um, I don't know. I like Neroli. Neroli's all right. I, I'm not sure about Pettigrew. Yeah, Pettigrew's a white floral, isn't it? It's clean and fresh and crisp and easy to wear. It's it's a nice, refreshing note. Yeah. Now, I've got Mediterranean Neroli by Xenia. Sorry? It's not something I want in all of my perfumes. No, I couldn't. It goes great with green notes. Neroli almost has a green aspect to it. It is green. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Most thought for me. Green citrus. Green citrus. Green citrus. It yeah, it's got a citrus vibe. What's well, part of the stem from the orange blossom? Yeah. That's what I was saying before. No, really, most of the times can go very harsh and too baby powder. Yeah. Kills white gold. We've been talking about this earlier. Really. Yeah. Anka needs to I die, see. especially as a headliner. Yeah, we've had enough, especially the way it's done. Uh, heavy tuber is well, one floral I can't pull off. All right, let me ask you this. Say you could you could lead the way for designer perfumes and set the trend. What would you like to see? What changes would you implement? Deregulation. Um, the chances of that happening are very slim. Yeah. I'm talking about um, the, style, the style of sense. The what style of sense. I don't think you're going to get, I don't think you're going to get a change in the style of sense while there is the the infrastructure the infrastructure and the 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 way like the culture the the, the way the culture's gone without massive like structural change within like behind the scenes from the sense um I would break up all the big companies if I could change one thing about about the the perfume landscape, the perfume industry. I would break up all the big companies, um, LVMH. I would break them up, uh, Procter and Gamble. Um, basically, all these like big umbrella corporations which buy up smaller. That's why that's why we don't have plurality anymore because they're all pushing the same shit. Um, the, the the individual houses aren't individual houses anymore. They're all owned by the same fucking like corporations, and until they're broken up, um, that that that's all. That's you're going to keep getting the same thing because it's a seller's market, not a buyer's market. Um, if I could change up, if I could change, if I could change one thing about the the way that the style of perfumes are going, um it would probably be the audience um the audience because people keep buying it people keep buying shit perfume so they keep making shit perfume. so how would you affect the audience in order to get them to buy what you want i don't know how i'm, would I'm influence them I'm, somehow how would i influence the well i'm not an influencer um 
in that sense, but what would you do to get the the audience to to shift? Because right now it, it seems like they're making the most simplest things possible. Perfumes have never been simpler. And it's it's the big brands that are responsible. Everybody's looking at Chanel, Dior, even Hermes. Yeah. And the reason the reason that they're doing them, they're the biggest companies and they do all the data stuff. Um, you've got to remember as well, they have they have like all the data and all the um all the research to see what people's tastes are like. They plan ahead and they are giving people what they want. So it's the audience you've got to change. And but I've, we've discussed this before as well about how we think, well, how I think that perfume reflects society. Um, how you can see, like how you can see society in perfume. And at the minute we're being bottlenecked. There's a huge bottleneck in society um, where everything is very similar. People are struggling to be, people are, people are, people are, people are striving for like the same things at the mm -hmm. minute and everything's very everything's very competitive but it's very competitive in a small area um there needs to be like a, there needs to be a widening and a, and a plurality and that's what like i know it's not like the answer you're looking for but um i think that i think that what the biggest thing you could do to affect different perfumes to affect like the plurality of perfumes is to get rid of all the um the corporations the corporations that own all these all these brands they should be broken up and they should be they should be made to be their own houses and it should go back to what it was it should go back to what it was basically is like loads of competing in smaller individual houses you're obviously still going to have the behemoths which are like self-owned which is like chanel dior they're always going to be bigger just because of the nature of the brands um but there's, I can't see, I can't see the change where I would, where would I go with, with change in perfume? It would be hard, it would be hard to do because it's like, it's like these corporations are like oil tankers and they take ages to turn around. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, you. I, I'm hearing you. I agree. Uh... Whoa. I, I get it. I I don't think there's going to be a quick fix anytime soon. No. No, I can't see it either. Um, but I'm just curious, like, how much money is enough for these companies? They obviously want to sell as many bottles as possible with no no care in the world for the art. Like, let no. Nope. And it's the same principle. It's the same oh, principle as you saying how many bottles is enough, how much cash is enough for these companies. It's never enough. If they had all the money in the world, it wouldn't be enough. You don't think there's a trade off? Not for, not for them, no, because that they're legal. Like if you're if you're a, if you are on the stock market, you have a legal obligation to do what is best for your shareholders. Your shareholders want money. Um, if you are publicly owned, um, or even like even pri if you're privately owned, you want to make money, don't you? You tyrannical. Um, I would take everyone's guns as well. You don't need guns. Um, if nobody had a gun, you know. what? No, I wouldn't take people's free speech. That's what's happening now. The perfumers are losing their free speech. Are they? Yeah, um, they're, I don't think they're 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 creating from emotion. They're creating to sell perfume. They're creating from from marketing. There's obviously a lot of marketing market testing going into these perfumes. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, that's the supply I, I, is dictating the demand. I, I talked to one person, and he said he would he uh, he would create for a consumer and they would come to an agreement and they loved his work and six months later they would come back to them him and say you know what we've done the market test on this 
and it failed. We don't, we don't want it anymore. So that's the kind of thing yeah. that perfumers are going through. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, so they're not creating from a place of love or passion or whatever it is that inspires you. We all have something different. They're creating from the algorithm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's what the machine's doing. I think at, uh, at Dior, they're using the, they're using the algorithm. You're creating with a parachute on. Yeah, with a net. They're creating with a net like uh, tightrope jumpers. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. There's no danger anymore. There's no there's no risk. Um there's no sort of like there's no one there's no one got the balls to go for it anymore. Um everybody's just hoping that if they keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding, that they'll come out with something that's that's worthy of a go back and make it cheaper, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's make what you're trying to isn't it? Make it easier to wear, make it make it you know, so when you're in the duty free, it's the first thing people are going to want to smell like. Yeah, it's mass consumption, mass consumerism. It's fast and cheap. That's what it smells like, and that's my problem with the new H24. It's not very good perfumery at all. It's so uninspiring and dull. Yeah, it's it's where we're at, and as a society as well. I honestly don't it's see well, it anytime soon. No, I don't either. That's why I said I would break up the break up the um I would break up the big brands. People All just big want to it. What if the people were educated and they actually knew what perfume can do to them? Like what what is it that it does for us? What brings us back? What is it about perfume that has us spending hundreds of dollars on a bottle? What drives us? How can we sell that to, to other people? Or how can we promote that? How can we share our passion with other people? Like certainly if there's something that we find in it, don't you think, you know, other people can see the same thing? Some other people have got other interests. Yeah, they've got their um, own. They, they would ask. I mean, they would ask you how you can't find the joys of train sets, um, or gaming, or crochet, or whatever it is that they're into. We're just, we're just, we're just sitting here like, like, like lovers of the art that we are, and we're just like, and we just, we would do anything for perfume to rule the world, but it doesn't rule the world, and it's never going to rule the world, and it's not. It's not, it's, it's not, <laughs> what? I should I release a pled version, a flagged version of every person. That's a pretty funny. good shout, actually. Yeah. There's some pretty funny yeah. people. Yes. See, they, see, the thing is, right, the thing is, is that good perfume, new perfume, new fragrance releases, right, can be done, as George showed couple of years ago or a year ago with signature and they can be good and they can use quality ingredients right but you've got to have somebody in charge who wants that you see george is like like he's like a sort of independent mm. um it's 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 if he'd had somebody on top of him who was saying where's the money where's the money zaharoff right you know right right um, he didn't like, feel that like, pressure. <laughs> exactly Exactly. He felt the pressure from within, but he also had like his his overriding thing was that he wanted to create something that smelled good. Um, and also be like the, the idea, the ideal thing to do is to create something that's critically acclaimed and sells a lot. So that's just... That's just where it is, isn't it? You know what I mean? I haven't said that very much tonight. You haven't. You've been doing really good. Yeah, that's right. Huh? All right, we're three and a half hours in. Oh, should God. We, we chop this? You may chop if you wish to chop. 
I'm I'm ready for bed. Somebody put in the thing before about oh, yeah. going to bed. Don't disrespect the audience. I'm not disrespecting the audience. I'm just tired. <laughs> but I like I like it. You say it's an engrossing conversation. We like to have these conversations. Who's the fake master perfumer? Yes, that that's something we should answer. Um, is it is it is it all right to lie about being a master perfumer? We should answer that question. Uh, you can go ahead. I think we all know. No, it, no, it is fucking not all right to lie about being a fucking master perfumer, oh, no. Roger. No, it's not. It's not okay. I don't think it's okay in any sense. I think you should always be forward and honest. And I was talking to Roger Dove when I said that. Mr. Dove, you let people think you were a master perfumer and you weren't. Naughty. Uh, I, I still think that we need some more proof about that. Oh, dear. I've got a big cup of water. I've just gone downstairs for it. I'm ready for bed now, though. All right. Good. It's, it's Good. Oi, oi. All right. All right. right. 77 people still here. Thanks for thanks for thanks for stopping by. Thanks for entertaining us. You guys entertain us just as much as we try to entertain you. So really appreciate that. Um we'll, we'll see. I don't know. I imagine in the next couple of days, probably. Duck and I will Maybe probably well. think of something to talk about. That's right. When I get me H24, we can talk about it if you want. Yeah, we can. I mean, I've already given the majority of my thoughts. I don't know if it, it makes <laughs> a, a standalone video for it. But, um, That's right. Night, night, everyone. Thank you. Guys, thanks. We'll see you soon. And uh, be well. Thanks, Duck. Night, Jay.